It is us, Dragon's Greed Gaming, and we are back in the saddle. Thank you all for joining us tonight as we delve back into our Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition Gallows Geists. And you are joining us tonight for episode 81? Probably 81. We'll go with 81. Uh, as always, I am your host, the Great Unclean One. And before we dive into it, uh, be sure you check us out on Facebook and Spreaker, where we host the podcast. Give us a like and a follow and a subscribe. Help us build that channel up. And be sure you stop by uh, Apple Podcasts and give us a uh, you know, give us a good review. Give us some five stars. Help us build the channel. You know, we're always looking for uh, uh, for more of that. What else? Oh, actually, we got a couple shout-outs this week. First and foremost, let me get my notes here. So, first shout-out is going to someone who left us a five-star review uh, for our podcast, which, of course, we greatly appreciate. Uh, this was from Slipping Into Darkness. Love the screen name. Oh, and we got the cat here, too. Apparently loves it. Um, Slipping Into Darkness says, The Great Unclean One is a captivating storyteller. The characters are amazing as well. You can actually see the story in your mind. I find myself listening to the episodes every Friday before I do anything else. For the record, I am not a gamer, but this story is so good that I'm hooked. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of my Friday mornings. Well, thank you, Slipping Into Darkness. That is a very kind uh, set of words, and we appreciate that. Uh, pretty cool if that you're not a gamer. I don't know if that's our friend Donna or someone else, uh, but either way, we appreciate that. So shout out to Slipping Into Darkness. Uh, also, shout out to one of our raving fans, Aaron Carlo. Um, I was on Facebook earlier today, and someone had asked about, uh, you know, what are some of the best uh, Warhammer podcasts out there? listen to and good old Aaron good old reliable he said check out Gallows Geist and check out uh good old Carrie and Company um although you get points off Aaron because you said you like Carrie and Company more but <laughs> I'll forgive it because Carrie and Company is my favorite uh podcast after Gallows Geist so as a matter of fact uh Liam and Matt from Carrie and Company Mud and Blood uh, Toa Table, as they're called now, inspirations for getting me to start this podcast uh, two years ago. So, good stuff, good stuff. And what else do we have here? Well, we got a cat now who's scratching the wall. Hold on a second. He just he just wants that closet door open. I don't know why. Then he went closet. I don't know. Um, what Very else? Oh, another like shout. Out. <laughs> I know, right? He just stares at me like, "What are you? Why? Okay, he's in the closet now. So that's that's great. Is Tom Cruise in there, Strigoi? Uh, who else? Typical oh. cats. Meow and complain, looking for attention. And then you give them attention, they just sit there and go, what, what, what? what? Right. You're just asking you've for had, attention. You've had all day to ask for attention. And now that we're we're live, that's when it happens. Uh, mm -hmm. Other shout out to Tyler Goodflower, another fans. Uh, he posted on uh, our episode that got released on Friday. Uh, literally read the book this takes reference from last month. And... Uh, it's making me excited. Still powering through the fu finally almost done with uh, thirteen. So uh, that's cool. Uh, I'm glad this is uh, this chapter is from probably my two favorite Warhammer novels and uh, my favorite Warhammer province. So if you've not read Swords of Vengeance and Swords of Justice, check those books out. They're older, but some of the best ones. If you want us to do this campaign, that's where it came from. Two other shoutouts. Like I said, we got a few today. Um, for those of you that may not know, this weekend. Uh, it is currently March 26th. Adepticon has come back in full force. And uh, although uh, I am not there this time, uh, a lot of friends I've seen posting and taking pictures and stuff. And I want to give a shout out to Elric's Hob. Uh, a good friend of ours, Tony, passed away uh, over a year ago from some health complications. And he was one of the driving forces bef behind Elric's Hobbies. And it was really really cool learning to see uh the gang and uh one of his daughters and and just some of our friends still keeping elric's hobbies going and set up with their usual booth at adepticon if you are a tabletop gamer of any sort that has to do with miniatures check them out that's e-l-r-i-k elric's hobbies 
Uh, they've get mostly specialized in like custom bases. So if you're looking for some cool scenic bases for your figs, you know, typical resin stuff, they come in all shapes and sizes and designs and styles. They've also, they also got stuff, KL75 paints. Um, they've also got uh, basing materials and some gaming aids and dice and things like that. So be sure you check them out. Uh, they've got some great stuff, especially when it's painted up and a lot of little knickknacks if you're into the tabletop stuff, even some little terrain bits too. So um, keeping keeping that dream alive as well. I miss you guys. Hope everything's going well at Adepticon. Hope everybody's staying safe. And uh, yeah, keep it going. And finally, as you may recall, I mentioned I had finally gotten into a game of Alien RPG, and that took place last night. And fellas, it was <laughs> fucking baller. All right. I hung out with a dude named Scar. Not to be used with uh, Scar from our campaign here, uh, but Scar has his own little Discord channel. He does some Twitch streaming. And unbeknownst to me, we were actually streaming last night's game. And I don't have a webcam or anything like that, so people were just staring at my symbol of hut. Uh, what started off to be a four-hour cam uh, one-shot turned into almost like five and a half as we were just at the end. We are like, let's keep going, let's keep going. But we played through Hadley's Hope, uh, Hope's Last Day. I played a singleton, spoilers by the way, I played a singleton who is the sleeper agent that turns on everybody at the end. And guys, not only did I survive... I was the only one to make it out. Okay. At the at the end, oh, right? Shit. At the end, it started cascading, right? Went from like four stress to eight stress in like two rounds of combat cuz everybody started panicking. We were basically running to get to the shuttle. We open a door, there's an alien, right? Now I played smart. I made sure I was always in the middle of the group <laughs> pretending to cover everybody, quote unquote, but just making sure that someone else was taking hits, right? The android starts fighting the alien and it tells us to start running. I start booking it, right? Because the alien's distracted. Uh, the janitor guy, Hirsch, he's following me. The other three, one by one, get picked off by the alien. The alien does the head bite, kills the android, uh, goes after the scientist with the fucking tail. He's dead. Meanwhile, uh, the leader of the group, she panics and runs away. Luckily for me and Hirsch, the alien chased her further into the base. She went berserk, and she managed to kill it in close combat with her, uh, I think she had a blowtorch, but the acid killed her at the same time. Real. So, Hirsch and I make it outside. I'm sitting on eight stress, right? And we get to the end, and the GM's like, okay, you guys get in the shuttle, you take off, and you escape. I'm like, okay, before we do that, I'm like, I want to... Uh, I'm gonna. I told him I give the key card to Hirsch. I tell Hirsch to open the shuttle, and I'm gonna cover the shuttle in case anybody's hiding inside. Right? Hirsch does oh, that, you and I <laughs> shot him <laughs> in the in back. I shot him in the back with the shotgun. And oh. went, okay. Now I had. I was sitting at eight stress, so I'm like, I, we're either both gonna panic and fail and die, or I'm gonna kill him and escape. I, and I was like, if the aliens, if there's aliens in here, we're totally fucked. There's no way we're going to survive. But I'm, like, I'm going to try to kill them and pull this off. So I fucking did seven damage with the shotgun. No <laughs> panic rolls. Fucking just blast him. Gouged out his eye with the shot. And, and luckily the GM did not have the aliens in the shuttle at the end. Uh, oh, okay. So as, as he was like bleeding out on the ground, uh, I was like, Sorry, man, it's business. And I fucking escaped. Oh, man, was it great. Was it great. And it was funny because we were done and I, I explained the agenda to everybody. The guy that was playing Hirsch was like, you know, he was like, I was about to just give you the key card and say, go ahead. I've got to fight these things because like his, you know, his agenda is to fight all the demons or whatever. Um, but I was like, I had to go for it. You know, it was either going to be epic or a total failure. So. What a great group of guys. One of the best games of Alien uh, that I have pleasure of playing in. And uh, definitely guys I could just see myself playing more RPGs with, which hopefully will happen in the future. But anyway, shout out to Scar. And if you want to watch uh, some good Twitch stuff, uh, find him. His name is uh, S C A A R. That's Scar. Uh, his logo looks like kind of like a green reptilian eye, I think. 
But uh, yeah, he was dressed up like Ripley, so he had like the jumpsuit from like the first Alien on, and like a Nostromo hat, and he had uh, aliens playing in the background on a TV. So good shit, man. Loved it, Scar. Hope we can uh, hook up again and, and play again because that was a fucking blast. So worth the month long wait. I will tell you that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, lots of shout outs. And uh, one other quick announcement, listeners. Uh, as you know, we'll be having a giveaway at the end of the campaign for Roleplay 4th Edition. But I have other exciting news. Uh, it has been confirmed. We've got some more great prizes that will be coming. I'm going to announce them at a later date. But suffice to say, there's going to be some more cool shit for Warhammer Roleplay uh, that you don't want to miss. So stay tuned. Be tuned. We'll have uh, the rules for how you can get entries to that when we're going to do the game and everything uh, in a couple weeks when this is all said and done. But um, yes, I can confirm there will be more stuff. Uh, I just don't have the details on exactly what yet. So that is coming. And yeah, without further ado, let's hear from our fantastic group of players here. My friends, my buddies, my players. Uh, Eric, how you been, man? How was uh, how was it um, your tournament thingy? Hey Chris, uh, good. Uh, so I played last week in a 30k narrative event that we <laughs> kind of stopped doing once COVID hit. Um, but they're trying to pick up a few pieces, seeing who's interested again, and I was able to get a couple games in yes, uh, last week. Um, I think we're going to try and play with the schedule a little bit so we don't run so late next time. But I played against, uh, I ended up only doing two games because they ran kind of long. Um, mm -hmm. Against Night Lords and Dark Angels. Okay. Um, Did you Night win? Lords, the game. Uh, the, no. The Night Lords, we ended up tying. Uh, so the way we've been doing it is so each each player has their own own objective. So you have to win your objective and stop the opponent from reaching their objective. Okay. Uh, cool. So against the Night Lords, we both reached our objectives. And oh. it was a really fun game. Um, I I played him before, but uh, the Night Lords are a new uh, a new army for him. Uh, and the Dark Angels player, um, I just I got rolled. <laughs> it was <bad. laughs> he, the, they they have some of the new. They're one of the newer uh, legions. He had rules, and they're strong. Yeah. Uh, he had a, a Mastodon, which is this giant $500 tank that just that's <laughs> about 40, 40 transport capacity. And it, it's uh, super heavy, so it, it's got tons of oh. stuff. So it, Like five, it 500, $500, 500 points type of tank? <laughs> no, $500. Yeah, seven, yeah. 750 points. Damn. <laughs> it's, that's a spicy meatball. Damn, Damn it. Cool. Well, hey, uh, but it was it was got, fun and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we got more uh, got more horse heresy on the way now. We just saw the new uh, new edition coming out in the near future, so that'll be exciting to see a lot of the plastic kits uh, or more kits becoming plastic. I should say that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Next. So well, we missed you last week, but we're uh, we're glad to have you back. Um, you'll see a little bit what we missed when we get to our recap here in a second so oh, great good to have you back all right uh how about kyle who are you who am i uh <laughs> uh i'm kyle i play uh right now majorly la volpe uh artelian duelist um who is got more tricks up his sleeve i just uh realized when going through his uh talents now combined with his new um weapons loadout so that'll be fun um yeah. it's amazing what you can do with a character when you spend your experience points <laughs> i mean he's fucking he's he's about to be worse than egon when it comes to the poor bastards he comes across <laughs> uh and yeah i also play egon the pit fighter and yeah i think that's it well, I almost got killed in our every other week Monday Warhammer game with my wizard. Found like a hidden chaos temple shrine, and the we there were these mirrors that were clearly it was like a Slaneshi cult, and we smashed one of the four mirrors, and a demonette came out of the other mirror, and then a turn later another demonette came out of a different mirror, 
And they're like, oh shit. And they took down our tanky soldier, uh, like right away. And um, of course I couldn't roll to save my life that night, despite having fucking four fortune points. Uh, and um, yeah, I got slapped. Then I managed to do some damage, disengage, got over to our, our roguey guy who has a, a halberd now, so he can actually dish out some damage. And the fucking demon had just chased me and clobbered me. And uh, I was down to zero and I had to make my first critical roll. Uh, luckily, it was just like some bleeding conditions and I didn't die. But I was like, "This we're going to fucking wipe here. Two of us are down in like two rounds of combat. You know, and our peasant is running away because he's broken, right? That happened right away. Failed his fucking fear test or whatever. And then the rogue is like slinking out like, I don't want anything to do with this. Like, we need you. <laughs> but I'm still alive. And, you know, I've cast, like, one spell so far. It was pretty amazing. Now I feel nice. your pain, Matt. It's like, oh, I have a 60 in my skill to cast magic. This will be fine. It's not. Mm, no. Yeah, the spell you, casting is, is hard in this you, system. You you need, like, 80 plus for your fucking uh -huh. spell casting. Uh -huh. I get it now. It all makes and sense. that's if you want to cast spells with, like, a casting value of zero. Like, if you've got anything with, like, a high casting value, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Start casting three rounds before the combat starts. Then yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just always be casting. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I finally did cast, it was amazing. I blew up a fucking the, that vampire, but um, the literal ABCs of wizardry. God, it's, you you need so <laughs> nice. much experience. Like oh. we're up to like sixteen hundred experience, and I feel like all of it's just gone into trying to like, like function as a basic wizard. You know. Uh -huh. And then it's like, uh -huh. at the war, the fucking soldier over here is like, well, I've got fucking 56 toughness. I'm like, I don't even have points to put into toughness. <laughs> like, this is bullshit. And then you want to learn a new spell, and that's a whole bunch more EXP, yeah. too, just to be able to get your basic stuff. Like, oh, Ev it's, it's... And, like, every talent is good, and it's like, I need this. Like, oh, God, it's rough, man. It is rough. So shout out to all my wizard homies out there. Uh, all you know, right. Mort would feel your pain if you could, you know, still feel pain. Oh, big rip. Big, big rip. rip. Just, well, you know, raise him as an undead. He used to play Mort, but now he is something something more. What's going on tonight, Matt? Uh, well, I, I am Matt, and I'm playing Father Bruford Gottenberg, the warrior priest of Sigmar. Uh, as far as what's going on with me, well, I am uh, just got off my work week, and I'm looking forward to starting my weekend and uh, vegging out in video games. That's, uh, that, that, that's my grand, grand plans. Good man, I uh, I haven't had much time this week, but I did kill the second demon prince in Total War Three, so Excellent. I have two two of the four souls. The demon prince undivided faction is ahead with three souls, but I finally got my shit under control. I'm starting to slap Scarbrand now because he's been uppity and declared war on me, so we got to put him down. And uh, I have four armies now. And I, I've kind of found the recipe with Nurgle, and I've I've won some really outnumbered battles in against my favor, and I I can usually pull it off without anybody dying. So it's it's a slow campaign, but we're getting there. So I think I think we just gotta if we take out the Demon Prince, so he can't get the last soul, then I think we'll be fine. What are these souls you're talking about? It's part of the story. You have to get a soul from each of the different uh, realms of the Chaos Gods. You fight, like, okay. their favorite demon prince. Okay. And that unlocks the last area where you fight the, the final boss and the final battle. Gotcha, gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. It's like every 30 turns, the portal's open, and you choose which of the Chaos Realms you want to go into. And they're, like, a special area that have a special mechanic, and they have a special, um, like, uh, story fight, a story mission. And, um, you know, they're, they're tough. Uh, I, you know, some of the mechanics in the realms are kind of meh. Uh, the Zeech one is not particularly enjoyable. Um, and the Nurgle one was kind of a grind, but the battles themselves I liked. So, uh, yeah, so far so good. And last but not least, that's going to lead us to Sean. Hello. What's up, motherfuckers? It's Sean again. I still play, now Scar. Saeed, if we ever return to our portly friend, uh, and Pieter Verstolen, the spy master. Have Have you ever had this many characters under your control in one game? Not as a player, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a DM. You're like, all right, I got these stupid guys here. 
bothering actual player characters, but as a player now, three three is definitely the limit I've had. Well, I continue to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I've gotten a lot of work done, and I'm like, I'm more mo time I sit down. I've got a list, and I'm slowly checking stuff off the list, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's coming together, and I think I'm very hopeful that you guys are going to enjoy how this all comes together at the end, so... Either way, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying finishing it and actually going to be able to see a campaign come to an end, so I'm excited to see the rest of this in action. And yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I am your host, the Great Unclean One, and I think I've talked enough about what's going on in my life. I got three cats. One of them's really loud when he comes in here and hangs out. His name's Strigoy. That's all I got to say about that. So, alas, we left our heroes, three groups... We're up to more crazy shit. Verstolen, Kessler, Father Bruford, and Ludwig Schwarzhelm, the Emperor's Champion, continued to head east in the Runefang of Krang, reunite the It was during this time that Verstolen, with a massive plus seven success level test, finally broke the hidden cipher code to Master Lassus's coded messages that Schwarzhelm had brought you. And in those, you discovered that it appears Natasha has been at this for quite some time. Um, and maybe about uh, shortly after Marius uh, had passed away, the previous Elector Count, she had somehow crossed paths with Lassus, the mentor and tutor of Lord Schwartzhelm. And he had been passed up for a promotion in the Imperial Army. And from these letters you learned he appeared to be quite slighted at that and quite upset. And he had basically thrown in his lot with this uh, this chaos sorceress and had been the mastermind who had arranged the weakening of the defenses in Blackfire Pass, the gold that was sent from newly minted from Altdorf that somehow the orcs got their hands on or, or were paid and some of the equipment they had gotten their hands on as well. And it turns out that he was a big factor in all of this. And you basically learn the extent of uh, what Natasha has been up to. And it does appear, at least in, in your initial findings here, that perhaps Rufus was duped in all of this and had no idea what Natasha was truly doing. And everyone's worst fears seem to be true that um, somehow she must be connected with Groslick and there is... Um, there's something about Averheim that they appear to be focused on. You're not sure what yet, but it appears the Elector Count throne has been given over to the great enemy and now have that horrible fact to contend with. Uh, Father Gothenburg had a chance to hold the sacred rune fang of Kurt Helborg, the very blade that had impaled him in the chest several sessions ago, and he learned a bit about the history of this blade along with basically getting visions from the blade of its storied history back from when it was first forged by the dwarf runesmith Ulrich the Mad during the time of Sigmar all the way up to the invasion of Gorbad Ironclaw, the orc war boss who single-handedly with his wa pretty much destroyed the province of Salin and wiped it off the map uh, up until it was uh, granted to Kurt Helborg as his badge of office. And after holding that blade, Father Bruford has a better understanding of what Schwarzhelm met, meant when he said the blade seems to be guiding him to Helborg. Meanwhile, we then switched over to Scar, the preceptor of the Reichsguard Knights, along with Lavolpe, Athenara, and our other Reichsguard Knight, Isen. And they had launched an ambush on one, uh, one of Groslick's uh, military baggage trains. And we focused in as the four of them uh, had basically launched an ambush. And Athenara hit up in a tree to act as sniper while the other three charged in on Hwick. Unfortunately, despite having the best stealth and using a fortune point, Athenara failed and was the one that was detected. Uh, somehow the knights in full plate armor hiding in a bush were seen, but the elf in camouflage in a tree was the first one they saw. Um, at that point, 
Uh, we saw how awesome mounted knights with lances can be on the charge as Ison and Scar just annihilated dudes left and right. La Volpe shot a few people, and when the dust settled, you had captured the wagon, you had captured, I believe it was two guards, and one of them tried to run off, or there was two remaining, one you captured, one put up a good fight before you finally put him down, and one managed to escape, but the rest of the Reichsguard claimed the other two baggage trained without incident. Only the one guy that you guys let escape got away, but everything else under your control, and you've taken these wagons filled with military equipment, weapons, armor, gold, provisions, uh, rations, water, and beer, and ale. Uh, you've secured that, taking, taking it back to Castle Draken, Fell, Drakenmoor, Drakenmoor, uh, as Kurt Helborg has basically ordered, you guys are going to build up an army, whatever you can, and head back to Averheim. And then, on the way back to Castle and Moor, as you were making your way through the, the misty moors around the castle, uh, Athanara had spotted a lowly peasant hovel in the distance, which appeared to be uninhabited and abandoned. Scar ordered the three of you to go check it out, and upon doing so, the three of you discovered the slain remains of a farmer, his wife, and their two children, brutally murdered with multiple stab or slashing wounds, basically just bloody, bloody wrecks in their home. And we ended with uh, Ison gaining another corruption point, as he just couldn't hold his lunch after seeing such a horrible sight, and then Ison asking Athanara if he could track these assailants. So, uh, I think that's everything. So, any questions, players, about any of that? So, I nope. see your rolls for me aren't any better than my rolls for me. Um, well, your <laughs> stealth rolls were shit, but... Yep. <laughs> When you started firing, you were like rolling against like a hundred plus because of the range of the longbow. So, mm -hmm. um, Athenar took oh, out the driver right. in one shot. Yeah, with like <laughs> fucking twenty damage with the longbow, just pinned him to the the wagon. But yeah, uh, we were all shocked when we realized yeah. what you're rolling against when you're actually like in range <laughs> and able to shoot your bow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and to be fair, it was only the driver who spotted you. All the other guards were too distracted, oh, but okay. the driver saw you and was like, what the fuck is going on? And then everybody panicked, and then it all went to hell, so. <laughs> yeah, um, and he couldn't do shit because he had four in front of him, so. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the, the was... wagon spotted you, but the other guards were like, huh? And they popped him for a turn, so then Athena was like, I shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> and you made some sick shots over Scar's shoulder nice. as he was getting nice. the, uh, Oh yeah, Scar almost got his fucking hip fractured from a critical hit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. To avoid getting his hip wrecked gonna need a career ending wound yeah yeah you don't want that i guess i'll be a scribe now boys although i mean if you're on horseback a lot of the time it could be worse you know it's not like you're on i don't think you could ride a horse if you're not with that i don't think you could ride a horse if you're on dog i just don't think you can walk it off yeah, just tough out your bones grinding against each other. Yeah. All right. Dude, we'll just we'll strap you into the saddle like they did with Brand in Game of Thrones, okay? You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not paralyzed. I still have feeling there. You're just going to feel some extreme pinching for the rest of your life. It's fine. <laughs> You're going to feel the pressure. <laughs> yeah. Just turn your head and cough when you feel the pressure. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive back in tonight, fellas. Uh, is my audio sounding okay so far? Any... Any issues? Uh, I would say every 20 to 30 seconds, there's a very, very minor hiccup. Yeah. It's really minor, but it is noticeable. It happens like, like, like every 20 to 30 seconds. All right. All right. Well, uh, not much I can do about that right now, listeners. I did get a new wireless card for my computer, and it does seem to be stabilizing Foundry at least. Um, but I think Discord is having some issues tonight which i don't know why um, everything else on my internet seems to be working just fine i've got my notes pulled up youtube video is working in the background here with no interruptions so not sure what's going on with this but i am still looking into a couple other things to fix some of the audio here 
But yeah, just let me know if anything major happens while we're while we're discussing and playing. All right. Okay. Well, with you got that it. being said, why don't we zoom in to Reichsguard back on those misty moors? as you guys have discovered this peasant hovel and his slain family. Um, so we left with Ison asking Athanar if he could track the assailants. So we'll pick up pretty much right where we left. Okay. I can attempt to see if there's any evidence left behind. All right. You want to give me a uh, tracking roll? Tracking test, shall we say? Okay, that was pretty good. Okay. But you got one success? Okay. All right, well, it's not hard, Athanara. Clearly, uh, whoever or whatever did this has not really put any effort into covering their tracks. You very easily find signs and a trail that you pick up, and it heads out of the house into the moors. Uh, it looks like they came from or left this way. Can we can follow this trail? Well, let us pursue them. Can't let whatever did this get away with this madness. Is there any um, evidence of like, like was it an orc or? All you could tell is that tell? these were like, like either stab or slashing or claw wounds. But they like, it looks like somebody went like you know full like serial killer on these bodies and just was continually slashing and stabbing them. Okay. So, yeah, it's hard to tell if it was a blade or a claw. Um, I mean, there's no, like, bite marks, there's no, like, they've been eaten or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, they haven't been, like, crushed with, like, something heavy. So it looks like something, you know, more or less shredding them or stabbing them. Would you even uh -huh. go so far to say someone's getting some pleasure from mutilating these bodies? That is hard to say um, without a, a better heel check. You guys didn't do too hot, hot on that last week, so... Yeah, hard to say. Uh, Scar, what are you doing? They've been in there for a couple minutes now. Eventually, you see them come out. It looks like Athanara is, like, checking the ground and clearly looking for tracks or footprints or things of that nature. I'll, uh, I'll go over, or at least motion to ice him, try to get, like, a set rep that's going on. Uh, it looks like our woodland friend here has got, uh... Got some tracks leading out into the woods. Seems like there, whatever may have done this may be nearby. Go to uh, hunt it down and see if we can find the source of this this damage. Uh, did what? What's the status inside the house? <sighs> inside the house, well, it's a mess, sir. There was a there was a family that was in here that was recently and brutally slain within their homes. Yes, yeah, Scar. Father, you... child. Scar, you would be able to tell, since you're a, a, a veteran, you know, um, and, and you've had Ison under your command pretty much since he's been here, you can tell that he is, like, visibly shaken and probably, like, either physically shaking or, like, stammering over his words. Uh, he looks, like, frightened, you know, or perturbed. Mm. Um... Are there other Reichsguard sort of with us? We're kind of going in like a, a yeah, group of train. All, yes, all the Reichsguard you brought are with you on the road. They're all either at the front or back or sides of the three wagons that you have. So, you know, there's probably like six in front, six behind, and then maybe like, like three to six on each side. You have about, about 25 of the 50 Reichsguard that you currently still have with you that came to to a Averheim are here with you right now. The rest are back at the castle. Okay. And, like, how far away from the castle are we? Uh, a couple hours. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's less than a day, but it's starting to get dark, so you guys know you're going to eventually have to camp. Uh, cause you're not going to get to the cast back to the castle before, before nightfall. Gotcha. Okay, so we probably have like a few hours before it gets dark, or like an hour. Maybe an hour or two at that. <laughs> it's probably about like four or five. Okay, okay. Hunting a person in the dark is probably not easy. 
Although I don't know about elf stuff, so maybe. Um. Athanara, do you can you give me a navigation roll, please? I'll give you plus twenty. Okay. Once you passed your track test. Mm. Ew. Okay. You're. Uh, I mean, as as you're starting off with the trail, um, it's hard to tell exactly which direction it may be going in. It seems a little haphazard and almost like it's lost or you know you, like part of the trail continues to like do like circles and you like go back in the direction you were coming from so it's very haphazard and kind of zigzaggy um, if anybody else wants to give me a navigation you can at minus 10 uh, unless anyone else has the track skill they can attempt that as well otherwise just give me navigation at minus 10 um, let's would track be advanced Yes, definitely an advanced skill. Okay, uh, that's a no. Eisen fails by N one. Navigation minus ten. Ooh, Scar. Okay. okay. Rolled a two, two, so close to a one. <laughs> okay. It's a fucking no, alright. So, Scar, <laughs> um, you are Damn no... <laughs> you're no tracker or hunter or anything like that, but... You are fairly confident that with with the little bit that you've seen Athanara kind of track so far, it does seem to be going in the general direction towards the castle. Hmm. Looks like it's going towards the castle. Whatever it's... Or it, does it have, like, humanoid tracks? Has it got, like, feet footprints? Or it, can uh, I a just see, like... Ath Athanara, give me a... Check your skills here. Let me find your character sheet. Hold on. Too many folders. <laughs> <laughs> um, give me a lore beasts roll, please. Uh, this is gonna be at minus minus ten. Uh, oh, <laughs> plus three. Nice. Uh, you are fairly certain these are human or humanoid tracks. There's something weird about them, but it's it's not like beastmen hooves. It's not like it's not a four legged creature. You know that's on it all fours. Um, it's definitely something bipedal, bipedal. Sorry, um, and. It looks more or less like human, human tracks. Okay, so like shoes and stuff. Ah, uh, hard to tell. I mean, it looks maybe damaged shoes or strange footwear. You know, could be like weird boots or something. But you, you're fairly confident with plus three. Maybe like a green skin. You're not sure, but tracks are human-ish. They're off a little, but they walks on two legs. What do you mean, off a little? It's a weird detail to add. They're not like the the stride is off or something. Something about these are being different, but they look humanoid. Yeah, I think, I think no, that's actually a good point. The the stride and the gait of these prints is definitely bizarre. Um, I'll let you make one more test here. Since you came up with that yourself, I think that's a good point here. Uh, clearly, Athena has been paying attention to a few things here. Give me a... Hmm, give me an intelligence test at minus... We'll say minus 20. No way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. The the gate and the the stride is bizarre. One might even say unnatural. You could travel at night, um, but you're dealing, obviously, with all that, plus 
you know, everyone is on the verge of getting fatigued at this point. But All right. it's up to you. Uh, Scar would order his men to set up camp nearby. Obviously not, like, right next to the house with murdered civilians. Um, and then I guess... Well, the... Whatever it is, this person is going towards the castle. We should look into this a little bit further, but we don't have much light left. So better hurry. Maybe we can let this thing get away after what's done. Who knows what more damage it could do if it's left unchecked. True. We have to avenge this poor family. Well, we have to get this stuff back to Reich's Marshal first, as that's our main priority. But while we have time, we can look for it. Well, Athanar, if you could lead the way into the forest, I'm with you. All right. Inside out. Well, Volpe, do you go with them? Absolutely. Scar, what about you? Do you stay with the train? Um... Is there, I would assume, is there like a second in command that I can give yeah. Com yeah, like command to? You'd have a lieutenant, sure. Yeah. Probably a couple that you trust, but at least one that you'd have with you. Yeah. Let him know that I'm going uh, to follow a lead on a dangerous creature or person, and we should be back soon to set up sentries and, you know, watches and whatever. Um,. You know, he, he nods and he says, you know, don't, you know, I'll take care of it. Uh, but as you're, as you're getting ready to, to go off and, you know, obviously this, this is starting to kind of spread through the, the column. He says, uh, could you repeat that, Chris? Yes. Uh, he, sorry. He, he says to you, Scar, he says, uh, sir, if I may. Go ahead. Perhaps it would be wise to make haste to the Reichsmarschall. If what the elf says is true, if it's heading towards the castle, we should not risk it. If, I mean, I don't know all the details of what uh, happened in Averheim, but um, if the great enemy is at work, perhaps we don't want to risk anything finding us. I mean, it's bad enough one of his men already got away today. A good point. And Scar, you've been around the Reichsguard enough. These are, you know, this is your unit in particular. Obviously, there's more Reichsguard than the 50 that are here. Um, but you can tell there's definitely a murmur going through your troops, and there seems to be a little bit of indecision and um, even some, I don't want to say arguments, but disagreements as to, you can see, probably about half the men are eager to try to get to the Reichsmarschall. Obviously, you know, it's it's one of their duties to protect him, and so that seems to be kicking in, and you see others that don't seem to necessarily trust the elf or think that maybe, you know, whatever did this isn't your guy's uh, problem. But there's definitely some concern through the ranks that uh, if this is headed towards the castle, even with the other Reichsguard there, they, um, they don't want to take chances. Okay. Um, with his knowledge and experience of the Reichsguard, is he pretty sure that even if there's some fatigue that they could mostly get there intact even through the night? If anybody can do it, it would be the Reichsguard. <laughs> you know, they're... Okay. You know, they have the stubborn rule in Warhammer Tabletop, okay? Oh, Other don't, oh that's don't right. That, they so, do. Yeah, that's least, some bullshit. What does that do? It <laughs> means they always test on their unmodified leadership, no matter Ooh. what. Which normally, if you're fighting in a, a fight in that game, if you lose by 10, your leadership is reduced by 10 to like zero, so you break almost immediately. So fucking Reichsgar just gets stuck in and never leave. Like dwarves. Yeah, but they're only leadership 8, so they can still actually run away on like dwarves. Yeah, but they have the Reichsmarshal. Isn't he like leadership 10? Bravely that's, run away. That's if the Reichsmarshal's in your army. He's <laughs> he's only shown up when you're playing with 2,000 points or more. <laughs> Reichsguard right, well. can show up whenever the fuck you want. That's fair. That's fair. 500 um, points, five Reichsguard knights. Let's do it. <laughs> not like they're troops, but, but okay. No. 
Anywho, um, yes. Uh, if anyone could do it, the Reichsguard could. You've you've been. I mean, I'll put it this way: marching through the night after a battle for one night is nowhere near as bad as uh, things escaping Abraham. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you've um, been you've been through worse for ten times as long. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so, Scar would heed his uh, lieutenant's advice. Um, all right. Tell the men we're going to go towards the uh, the Reich's Marshal. If this thing is going towards the castle and he's there still wounded, we do need to be there for him. You do see a, a grin of satisfaction come across his face, and he slams his visor down and starts riding up towards the front of the column. And you hear him, "You heard the preceptor. Let's go on the double." And you see he starts, uh, they get a couple torches start to get lit as the light fades. And you see, like, you know, um, just about every night at this point has a torch. And, you know, they put one at least on the wagon or, you know, give one to the wagon driver and stuff like that. So um, they do as best they can. Uh, It's still slow going. Um, So, Scar, do me one thing here. Let's have you give me a leadership test. Okay. So well, you drive your Reichsguard on. Okay, just give me a second to see if there's anything I have with leadership tests. You might have some talents, maybe. Um, I know you have a lot, so. He has War Leader, which you consider uh, us being at war with Everheim. Yeah, yeah, you're in a war situation for sure. The, the okay. Reichs Marshal could be threatened, so I think all your your men are on on high like that on alert. Okay, so all subordinates able to see you may add your level in war leader to their success level in one willpower test per round. I don't know if that will affect them, but uh, hopefully help me. Any bonuses to this, or I would say plus twenty because. Some people think the Reich's Marshal might be in danger. Okay, cool, cool. Minus zero. Uh, I can just use a, the fortune point to give me a one success. You could. Or you could re-roll, try to get a better result. <laughs> Does it work? Well, it's a sixty-four. I think statistically, a reroll should a, sh- a reroll should help. Okay, we'll we'll try for a reroll. Ask all our wizards out there how that statistic thing works out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> dude. It's like cocked that's again. Great. Negative that's three. Great. That's okay. great. <laughs> all right, um, Scar, roll me a d one hundred, please. Oh boy. 43. Oh, well, that would have passed. Okay. Um, everybody gains a fatigue condition. Oof. As, uh, especially the Reichsguard, being in full armor, even though you're used to it, being especially. in full armor all day and riding a horse all fucking day, it is exhausting. Um, and La Volpe and... Face. Yeah, La Volpe and Athenara, uh, you guys aren't used to being in the saddle this long, and it is tiring. Um, so you, uh, fatigue sets in rather quickly, but the troops still press on uh, as you guys make your way through the night uh, towards the castle. Which one is fatigue? Uh, you know, the one it's that It's the egg fatigue. face. The egg, egg face. face gotcha. That's like sad. Yeah. Sad egg face. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I needed. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> if, if you if you left you click on the if you left click on the the image, it'll drop down and tell you what it is. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so you can actually read what all those conditions are. Okay. Um, but yes, you guys press on because the Reichsguard, and that's what you're you're supposed to do. Yeah. Meanwhile, we are gonna head back towards the southeast and reunite with uh, Commander Block and what is left of the army that is now returning to Everheim. So, alas, we saw Captain Block and the gang. You guys had just uh, emerged victorious at Blackfire Keep. 
slaying the orc war boss Iron Tusk Gitstampa, and finally breaking his orc horde and securing the pass and getting the fortress back under imperial control. Uh, in the fortress, Block had discovered some of the orders that Captain Drassler had received in regards to the troop dispositions within the, uh, the pass. And it became very clear to Block very quickly that um, these letters were fake. Fake in the sense that this was somebody issuing orders that either shouldn't be or were deliberately trying to do something damaging. Um, they still looked like legitimate orders, legitimate letters with legitimate seals and things like that, but Block can tell he's just got a knack for this. So, after a much needed night of rest, uh, you have taken half of the remaining troops with you back towards Averheim, leaving the other half, including those too injured to travel, under command of Captain Drassler, who has resumed command of the fortress with what is left of the Mountain Guard, and is beginning to clear out the keep of the Greenskin presence and try to get the pass back under control. You told him you would let Averland in general know about what's happened and to try to start sending more troops here to reinforce the pass as soon as you can. Uh, despite the weary days of travel and battle, spirits are high after dis destroying the Greenskins. Um, even troops that look exhausted or a little beat up just have a good look on their face. They're in good spirits. There's a lot of joking and and cheering and jiving going on, which as a commander is a very good thing for you to see. You can tell that uh, morale is very high and the troops seem eager to get back and uh, be done with this campaign. And obviously to show uh, Lord Schwartzhelm that you've succeeded in your mission. Um, for those of you that were injured, uh, it is a couple days at this point of traveling, so everyone is fully back to their uh, their full health, if anybody was still injured. Over the course of the next, next couple days, you guys make your way back down the pass through the mountains, back into the uh, the foothills here of the, um, of the pass, and begin to make your way towards the town of Grenstadt, the, basically the last major village before you enter the pass. And the cold retreats a little bit, although it is becoming the end of summer here and leaves are beginning to fall off the trees. Uh, the sun shines much more brightly out here in the rolling fields and the temperature does rise a little bit. You're not shivering as you were in the mountaintops. Um, during this time, um, the... Uh, the group of you, you know, you're like a little command group, has kind of speculated as to what to expect when you get back to Averheim. Um, the desert vultures are pleased to see that Saeed has made a full recovery despite his brush with death. And uh, Petra was a little roughed up, but she has just emerged all the tougher. And everyone, like I said, seems in high spirits. So you guys have a moment uh, here as we're on the road. You're nearing the city of Grenstadt. Is there anything anybody wishes to discuss or say on your way back? No, Saeed doesn't really have anything specific he would want to talk about. Um, so. All right. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk to you, girl. <laughs> She's no. my daughter. <laughs> uh no i think uh egon would be um kind of yeah what did i what did he what did he, he took a uh i think he took the horn from uh the war boss it was either the so, horn or one of the one of the tusks yeah um actually i think uh, it was i think it was the tusk from his helmet the horn got cut off because of a critical hit, but you took the tusk as a trophy. Okay. If I recall. 
So uh, he would probably be fiddling with that, uh, trying to figure out what he can, uh, what he can make out of it. As you guys are approaching, you know, the, some of you are on horseback. You know, you would be Egon along with Block and uh, and Kraus. Block looks over and he says, "What are you planning to do with that, codpiece?" <laughs> uh, Egon would chuckle and. Uh look at him dead in the eye and say it would be far too big <laughs> wait the cod piece or the uh, never mind and uh yeah egad would kind of look down and just chuckle <laughs> well eventually you guys reach the uh the gates of grunstadt and town looks more or less as you had left it before um, nothing, uh, nothing in particular seems out of place. Uh, and eventually you're let in. You are greeted by some of the town garrison. And, uh, eventually you see that Block asks to speak with, uh, the man in charge, in this case is the mayor. And the group of you, the command group here, so Saeed, you are welcome to be part of this if you'd like. Uh, but Egon and Kraus certainly are. You guys are in uh, the town hall as the army begins to, um, you know, set up camp outside the walls and you guys get some provisions for the men, horses and things like that. But, uh, you know, Block is still kind of all business at this point. You guys have a chance to meet with the, uh, the mayor here. And his name is Klaus Meningen. He's a lean man with kind of angular features, gray hair, clean shaven, um, short cropped hair, uh, but clearly has a, a bit of a, a sense of a warrior about him, perhaps retired from the military or previously served in the watch or something like that. Uh, you guys um, don't know for sure. Now, on your, go on your way to Blackfire Pass, Block had basically commandeered uh, everything that he could from the town. And the mayor was quite uh, helpful with this. He did not put up much of a fuss like the previous town when Schwartzhelm, I think it was Heideck, uh, where Schwartzhelm had Egon and Father Bruford lay down the law. Um, this mayor was much more accommodating uh, because Grenstadt was actually under attack from the orcs. And uh, you guys helped drive some of them off and they were more than happy to help uh, provide soldiers and supplies and such to go deal with the Greenskins. Um, however, uh, you can tell the mayor's still a little concerned when you guys come back. Clearly, Block has something on his mind, and perhaps the mayor does as well. And as you guys have a chance to meet with him in the town hall, some uh, ale and other refreshments are brought to the group of you. Um, at this point, Block has asked for, um, you know, for basically more um, groups to take back to Averheim. And they've kind of been discussing this a bit as he's explained what happened in the past. And uh, Mayor Meningen says, what am I supposed to do about the defense of Grenstadt? And Block kind of shrugs. Why do you even need a garrison here, Mayor? The passes are secure now. We've done what we came to do. And Meningen just kind of sighs, uh, obviously a little frustrated at this. Well, matters have moved on since you left for the passes. News has come of a new elector in Averheim. Count Heinzmark Groslick has been crowned. The issue has been decided. And uh, this is the first you guys have obviously heard of that since last speaking with Schwartzhelm weeks ago. Block continues, well, you must you must welcome that, right, Mayor? If Schwartzhelm's given the verdict, that's what he came for. And the mayor just kind of shrugs. Schwartzhelm, I'm told he's left the province. We're alone here again, ignored by the rest of the Empire, just as before. And you see that uh, Block frowns at this. Um, everybody give me an insight test, please. Okay. Me an intuition? 
I'm sorry, wrong game intuition. Yep. I got minus it. four. <laughs> Kraus right on the money. Plus one. Uh the two of you that passed feel like maybe the mayor has something on his mind that he's not bringing up. Uh, Kraus, you see, like, Block looks over to you as if he's kind of thinking the same thing. And then he, um, you know, you guys kind of give a nod to each other, and then he looks back to, uh, to the mayor. Do you say anything? Uh, what, uh... Do you often go off, uh, or have issues with the, uh... Lecter there? Hmm. Well, uh, it's, we haven't had an elector for three years, as you know, Eric Kraus. Um, so hard to say I've had a problem with one when there hasn't been one. Uh, but he reaches for a roll of parchment that's lying on the desk, and um, he scans this th what's clearly a letter or a message of some sort, and you guys have noticed he's now that you see him do this again with no one really talking, all of you realize that he's looked over this letter several times during this meeting. And eventually he kind of puts it down with a sigh and he slides it over to you, Kraus, and he says, This arrived yesterday by courier from the Averberg. It's signed by Count Groslick himself. By revealing the contents to you, I am breaking the first order that my new liege lord has given me. Perhaps now you understand why I'm feeling rather exposed without my garrison here. As you pick it up to read it, Kraus, Block kind of looks at you to see, you know, get your uh, opinion of it. And he says, why don't you just tell me what's in the letter? And really without any hesitation, uh, the mayor just kind of sits back in his chair and he goes, the elector knows of your presence at Blackfire Pass and he knew that you'd come back here. He ordered me to detain you in Grenstadt until his men arrived in force. He says he wishes to convey you back to Averheim with a guard of honor. As it happens, I'm forbidden to reveal these instructions to you. Make that of what you will. Hmm. And as you read this, Kraus, you can see that while... And you're you're savvy enough, having been around Schwartzhelm and dealing with this sort of stuff before, you know that uh, much like when we saw the Herald, the Imperial Herald sent by the Emperor speaking with Groslick, there is terminology here that makes it seem like it is a request or almost that it's it's an honor that Groslick is bestowing uh, to quote-unquote escort you guys, but in actuality, it is nothing more than like an armed guard taking you back clearly into custody. Yeah. And uh, you see this actually doesn't seem to unnerve Block too much, and he just says, detained, eh? Some reward for what we've done. Well, I don't take orders from him, Mayor. Until I receive notice from Schwartzhelm, I'll go where I please and when I damn well please. We've earned the right in blood. And he kind of spits these last few words out rather forcefully. And you can see that um, the mayor seems to appreciate that and kind of nods his head in agreement. And he says, well, I agree entirely, Commander. If I didn't, do you think that I would be telling you all of this? And he takes another swig of his ale. It's eight years of service here in Averheim. As he wipes his mouth, a man learns a few things about the arts of state as he ages. Groslick will want to install his own man here sooner or later. He's sending a battalion of troops already, and I'm not stupid enough to think that they'll take orders from me. And he, uh, he leans forward um, a bit, uh, and you can see that, um, you know, trying to come to some agreement with Block. And he says, 
We owe you a debt of thanks in Grenstadt. Take this advice as repayment. Groslik has no love for you, nor does he wish to have an army in his province that he does not control. You should leave now. I tell him if you can, or get out. There's only room for one victor here in Averland. And Block sits back in his chair, obviously pondering what's happening in this information. He looks to the group of you uh, to kind of see what you all think about this. They must do something. This uh, Nobody's taking me in. Block nods to battles. that. Yeah, he, he nods to that, and he looks at uh, at the mayor, kind of rubbing his chin, and he says, well, What do you do when we're gone? Groslick won't be slow to send more men. And the mayor gives you guys kind of a, a cold smile, saying, We'll make the best of it. What else can we do? Block uh, turns to you, Kraus, and he says, uh, How soon can the troops be ready? How soon can we leave? And you would guess, you know, you could give him a couple hours rest, be on the move, uh, you know, maybe before dawn. You know, at this point, it's it's almost dusk. Uh, mm -hmm. The sun is setting, so you want to give the men some time to rest. But you could leave before, you know, it's really light out, early, early morning. We could probably leave early morning before the sun rises. Let's give the men a few hours rest to sleep. And you're sure that some of your men will probably be imbibing in taverns and whorehouses and things like that since they've been on campaign. And uh, Block agrees with you. He knows this is what soldiers do, and he doesn't seem too perturbed as long as nobody's causing any trouble or any violence or anything like that. And he sighs and runs his hands through his hair. I said to the men that we'll go back to Averheim. We'll have to head west for a while, maybe as far as high deck. We've got a small enough force here that we can keep out of trouble until then. And we'll have a look when uh, we get closer. I'll not run across the fields again like a fugitive when the orcs were here. We've got a couple hundred, all of us battle-scarred. If Groslick wants to bring us in, well, he's going to have to work for it. And the mayor smiles at this approvingly and nods. Well, very well, uh, Commander Block. May the grace of Sigmar be with you and the rest of your men, for you certainly deserve it. And, uh, puts his arm across the table in the offer of a handshake and says, As to you, Mayor, uh, I hope he has uh, grace enough for the both of us. And you see that the Mayor returns with a classic warrior handshake. Um, and when you see him do that, Kraus, you can definitely tell this guy was probably a soldier at some point or served in the army. And... You know, the mayor lets you guys enjoy the provisions he's given you, lets you hang out in the town hall if you want a little bit of a nicer place to rest, and everybody gets uh, gets some much-needed time to just take a break. But you guys have a moment to discuss amongst yourselves once the mayor leaves you all, or if you have any questions for him before he leaves. Uh, Saeed uh, would ask if, there's, if the mayor knows any reason why they'd be trying to detain us. Well, my guess is that, uh, um, well, like I said, uh, he doesn't want an army in his province running around that's not under his control, and, well, whether or not Schwarzhelm's the one that put him on the throne or not, uh, it's typical, typical noble nonsense. They all like to do this, my friend, when they, uh, they want to stretch their muscles and, and flex and show people who's in charge. And sometimes they uh, they like to step over boundaries that uh, a wiser man may not cross. I've heard that uh, Groslick is quite um, a confident man, shall we say. Perhaps getting the crown has made him even more confident. Hmm. This is why I do not stay in places too long. Uh, Block gives a bit of a laugh, and he kind of slaps you on the shoulder. Tiring of the Empire already? At least it's politics. The fights <laughs> are good. 
Well, then you should stay, because there's plenty of those, too. But, um, I share, I share the sentiment. Is it, uh, is it not like this, where you're from? <laughs> Sean has no idea. <laughs> so. You can answer that however you wish, then. Ind is a strange place in Warhammer, and not much is known about it, so whatever Saeed wants to reveal, we'll, we'll, we'll throw with it. You make it has it been so long since I've been home. Hopefully it's changed, but probably not. Just go with that. He seems to uh, understand and just kind of, you know, knocks knocks his uh, his glass against yours. <laughs> well, if there's not anything else, Commander, uh, I do have things to prepare for, especially if Grosslick's goons decide to show up. Block looks to everyone else to see if anybody else has any questions. Egon would not have any. I guess not, uh, Mayor. Thanks for the tip. And he just nods and he says, uh, not a problem. And he leaves you guys to, uh, finish up your evening, get some rest, and, uh, unless there's anything else anybody wants to discuss, we shall... Um, we shall move on. No, Saeed's good. All good. right. Okay, then. Um, I'll tell you what, we're coming close to our halfway point here, so why don't we take our break, and then we will come back to everything, and, uh, we'll see if the bot can hold on while we're gone. All right. Better. <laughs> Be back in a few. All right, boys. BRB. We are going to switch over to uh, Schwartzhelm and the gang. <laughs> as you guys have continued trekking through the, uh, the wilderness here. And it's the middle of the night. And... Verstolen, you are having a terrible nightmare, one that you often have of what you imagine might have been your departed wife's final moments in the hands of the oh, that Schwartzhelm was able to put down. You wake up covered in sweat, kind of cold because it is night and you don't really have any camping gear um, you're uncomfortable and stiff from basically sleeping on the ground with no real pillow or anything like that and um, the wind is kind of ripping or rippling right now and kind of whipping through the, uh, the, the low moors as you've gotten further east into the, uh, the province and um you're not sure what awoke you, but uh, as you look over, you see Schwartzhelm. He's standing kind of on the, uh, you're kind of like on a small incline, and he's standing looking over, you know, this open area where the trees open up, kind of staring down into the, the valley below, and you know that's the direction of Averheim. And uh, Morslieb is, uh, is out right now. Oh boy. It gives the area a sickly green glow. And, um, you, um, you start to recognize parts of your dream that you, uh, you didn't, you haven't really ever seen before. And you saw uh, a tower or maybe a pillar of fire. Hmm. And you saw and heard this endless cycle of screams and flesh being pulled from the bone, people still alive while this was happening, and soldiers with the faces of dogs, hounds and canines. Okay. And it was like a shadow of insanity was creeping over wherever you were. Mm. Oh, boy. Uh, when uh -huh. you look, you see that um, Kessler and uh, and Bru 
Bruford uh, seem to be stirring. Do you say anything? Uh, Verstolen would just kind of get up and then walk over to where Schwartzhelm is and then just look out over the valley as well. As you get up, you realize as you look over at Kessler and Bruford, who you two are coming awake now, you're not sure what awoke you. Um, you notice that there's not just a sickly green light of the chaos moon in the sky, but you see other colors kind of dancing across them and across the, the landscape. And when you make your way over to Schwartzhelm, who's standing, excuse me, standing solemn and grim as always with his arms, with his arms crossed, you look down over this valley back towards Averheim and would all hear Verstolen kind of mutter to himself, Holy Verena, and you see this pillar of what can only be described as hellfire emanating from what is very clearly Averheim. And eventually Kessler and Bruford would join you guys. And you see this massive pillar of fire some of it looks natural, some of it looks colors that are not natural, clearly coming from the center of the city. In Sigmar's name, what is happening in the city? What... what did they do? It's Averheim, father. It's what we've done. And Kessler is like, that's impossible. Averheim is nearly a hundred miles away. And it almost looks to you guys like then the city itself is just having, like, fire rain down on it. Or at least the center of the city. And you all swear that you can hear these screams on the distant wind. And for Stolen, at first, you think it's just your dream kind of in the back of your head, but you see the others have a look on their face, at least Kessler and Bruford, maybe not Schwartzhelm. Uh, and you think maybe, maybe it's not in your imagination. Damn. All right. I mean... <sighs> The entire city is engulfed in chaos flames. That seems rough. <laughs> big rip, boys. Big rip. Glad we're not there. Pour um, one out for my homies still in Abraham. Jesus. And this goes on for what feels like an endless number of minutes that just drag on with this light dancing, this fire that's just lighting up the entire countryside. Uh, Verstolen would look up at Morsleep. Does it look, is it like a full ass moon right now? It is, and I will need you to give me a oh, shit test, please. Ooh. Ooh, big mistake, I guess. Or not. If I could hold on, it's not. There we go. Plus four. All right, so Verstolen, you look up at the Chaos Moon, despite your your best uh, knowledge to not do that, <laughs> and uh, you can tell that yes, it is not only a full moon. Uh, there's not a cloud in the sky. It shines brightly and sickly. It's pockmarked surface, and you swear you can see what looks like either a face leering back at you or perhaps a very similar image to the dual symbol of Zeech and Slanesh that you guys found on that guy's ring back in the city. No. Damn. Oh. War 
Warhammer, I guess, sort of lore question. Does Morsley come out at like a moon cycle, or is it kind of like come out when just bad shit's going down? Is it, is it like rare it does, that it comes up? Or is it, it like, does, is it every other thing? It does come out, quote unquote, naturally on a moon cycle, but it is often viewed as a bad omen, especially if it's full. Um, and especially if it's full and it's alone and the other moon is not visible, which currently Manslit Man is not. Um, it, would Verstolen know if, like, when the the Chaos Moon is full, is generally like a prime time for cults and yeah, oh, yeah. chaos groups to oh, yeah. do their yeah, wicked the, shit? Yeah, there's there's definitely reason to believe that they can draw power and energy from it, or or chaos energy can saturate when the moon is at its peak. Well, this is something we brought upon them. We need to hurry and fix it. Portshelm looks to all of you. Well, we're awake. Might as well keep moving. And he begins to stomp off, not really waiting for you guys to gather your things. And he goes and, uh, you know, picks up his bag and kicks out what's left of the dying embers of the fire, and you guys follow him into the night. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Right, I guess it's what they, what, what they call fucking up. Um. I'm gonna need Bruford and Kessler to make corruption tests as well. Uh, that, that is a cool test, correct? This one will be a cool test, yes. Straight? Straight up? Yes. Oh man, a five percent from Kessler. He's unfazed. For <laughs> Gothenburg with plus three. Uh, it's probably the worst thing you've ever seen uh, thus far in your life, Father Bruford. But you uh, you hold your faith in Sigmar close to your heart. Worst and... thing I've seen in my life so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always new opportunities. <laughs> this is Warhammer, after all. <laughs> Meanwhile, Scar, you and the Reichsguard be continue your march through the night, slogging as you uh, move as fast as you can, safely as you can, making haste, but everybody's tired and a little bit grumpy, but you push on through the night, and a few hours later, you guys make it to the outskirts of the castle, get through the, the front gate, and past the walls and um, everything seems normal as you guys get there there are guards you know where you expect them to be stationed they let you in and you know there doesn't seem to be anything strange going on you see some of the other Reichsguard greeting their brothers in arms you guys return and spirits seem to, to rise again uh, some of them seem surprised you guys have you know worked your way through the night here but they uh, begin to help relieve your troops who are clearly uh, tired and exhausted and begin to uh, get the, the baggage trains over to where you're hoarding all the supplies and, you know, moving your prisoner somewhere safe and things like that. But um, all seems well at this point. Cool, cool. Uh, Scar would let the uh, movers on, like, Night Watch know that there might be someone or something skulking around the castle and just to be extra wary. He gives you a salute, says, uh, of course, Perceptor, I'll let the men know. And you see he begins to uh, go and issue some orders and make sure that everyone is aware to be on guard. All right. Let's go. I guess. Check the inside of the castle. Sure. Things are as they should be. Okay. Uh, so you go and, and you... Do, uh, where do you go check, or what do you go check, exactly? Um, He would check to see if Rufus is still there, and then if um, Cart Helborg is still... Everything's good and steady with them. Okay. What about Ice with the baggage train back to the castle? Oh, 
Okay. Because right. whoever that was is probably coming towards the castle anyway, so just meet him here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eisen is well, definitely be on edge, knowing that that thing is out there and is likely either on its way or already here because it was ahead of us. So whatever this creature is, could be in the castle. So yeah, yeah Eisen's very first thing is to do a very thorough check of the castle for anything that's moved out of the ordinary just you know looking for this thing because he's kind of feeling a little paranoid right now okay so we see Ison go off and start obviously um more or less patrolling and doing a, a once over of the premises Lavo Bay and Ethanara how about you guys uh, I think I might join him I'm just kind of yeah I'd say yeah I'd say Ethanara has the best chance of, you know, uh, tracking, so the Volpe would kind of uh, stick with them. Plus, we've kind of got a little kinship going with with the, the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a scamp, that little guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, why don't the three of you give me perception tests while Scar goes to uh, check on Rufus and uh, Helborg. Oh. We'll, we'll come back to your guys' test. Meanwhile, Scar, um, you can tell that the inside of the castle is very quiet. By the time you guys get back, it's, um, you know, late evening. Uh, you know, it's the middle of the night, basically. And you might find a servant or, or something like that. that you know, or knights who's on patrol, you know, walking up and down the halls. And uh, you know, he just informs you everyone's asleep at this point, my lord. Haven't really heard anything. It's been quiet. Uh, sorry, Chris, really quick. Um, uh, would the fatigue still be in place, or has, like, time taken? Oh, no, you have to rest to get rid of fatigue. Okay. Riding through the night in on a horse after you've been fighting all day on a horse is not how you can recover fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, then I probably, my roll should be a uh, plus two instead. <laughs> there we go. Negative seven, negative six. Athena, yeah, though, uh, still, still alert. That's a no. Yeah. No, I'll tell you guys when you get rid of your fatigue conditions. Yep. Unless you, unless you get a, if you get a full night's rest, then um, I believe you get rid of all of them. Uh, oh, you lose one fatigue condition per hour of rest. So generally, a full night's rest will get rid of all your fatigue. Got eight of them, in which case you've probably died from exhaustion. So, uh, anywho, yeah, Ison and uh, Lavolpe, you guys are exhausted. Lavolpe, you are so sore from riding a horse all day. You're kind of like walking bow legged. I mean, your your hips, your thighs, and your your calves are just so stiff, um, and you're pretty usually fleet and, and nimble on your feet. Um, it just, it's painful to walk, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's like you've been riding a horse all day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, Ison, you are just completely drained. Uh, you've had so much adrenaline throughout the day, up and down between, you know, the thrill of combat and then the discovery of the bodies and just constantly on the move today. Your armor feels like it weighs 10 times heavier than it normally does. Um, you're sweating, you're dirty, you're hot, you're exhausted, and uh, you've probably got some riding fatigue as well. Maybe not as bad as uh, La Volpe because you're used to it a little bit more, but still, um, this has been one of those nights you're going to remember for a while serving in the Reichsguard. You haven't had many quite as rough as this. But Athenara, uh, despite all that, you are alert and attentive, and... Um, you're searching around. You don't see anything out of place. You don't hear anything out of place. Uh, you can hear Scar talking to someone upstairs. Uh, but other than that, everything seems really quiet as you guys are making your way, you know, around the castle. Uh, Scar, what do you do after he tells you, um, you know, there's it's been quiet? Um. Hmm.
I guess I would check myself just around the, I guess, upper halls. Okay. Give me a perception test, please. Okay. Probably stomping a little bit louder than the guy who's on guard here. Oh, not bad. Only minus one. Um, Damn, fatigue really hits. <laughs> yeah, so you're... You're feeling it too. I mean, you're just up by force of will and habit. You know, you're you're doing this, but you're having a hard time concentrating. Your your head's kind of throbbing. Your eyes are a little bleary. You know, you do the classic. You know, pinch the bridge of your nose and like shake your head, or maybe give yourself a few slaps, uh, rub the back of your neck, just trying to like stretch yourself out. But yeah, I mean, wearing all this armor all day is enough to make anybody fatigued, and then add on everything you guys have been into and up to. It's been a long day. Um, and uh yeah you don't uh you don't notice or uh, or hear anything um you know the guard makes his way down the hall and eventually disappears around the corner continuing his patrol route and you know for a little while you guys perhaps look around or continue to search and patrol and um everything uh everything seems fine uh but then <laughs> it's not there is a shattering of glass. Uh, Scar, you can tell that it is um, it is somewhere on the upper floor. Uh, La Volpe and Athanara and Ison. Um, actually, La Volpe and Ath uh, Ison, you guys failed really bad. So give me another perception <laughs> test. Uh, you guys failed as bad as you possibly could. Athenar, you hear this no problem, and Scar, since you're close enough, you hear it. Damn it, hang on one second. It keeps uh, putting me back on Egon. Failed by one. Damn, really close too, actually. Okay. Damn, I'm open. Okay. Right. So, Ison, perhaps, you know, you've still got your helmet on, maybe. You know, you're still being a little cautious. Whatever it may be, um, you maybe don't hear this, but everybody else does. You hear a shattering of glass. Lavolpe, you're not sure where it comes from. Athenara, you don't have to test. You can tell it comes from somewhere upstairs. And um, Scar, give me another perception test here. Uh, you hear something else. Let's see if you can if you can make out what it is. Plus two. Oh, with the clutch 8%. He is on guard as he knows the enemy is about. You hear after the crash, you hear um you hear some some uh, obviously some commotion in one of the rooms, and you know that this is the room that Helborg has been staying in. And then you hear this thin scream and you then hear something hiss, Hellborg. And you then see the door to Hellborg's room gets thrown open, and Hellborg comes staggering out, like almost maybe thrown, or maybe like just in a rush to back off. And he's just in his 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 britches for sleeping. He doesn't have a shirt on or shoes or anything. Um, still bandaged, you know, with a fresh bandage, and looks like probably had a fitful sleep. He's covered in sweat, and you see he's got, you know, the spare sword that he's gotten from Rufus's armory as he uh, as he backs up, and he's got the sword kind of pointing, obviously in a guard position, towards the, the opening in the door, and you see this thing. You see something stagger out of the room, uh, after him and it can only be described as an abomination she you, you see this creature that is clearly was once the body of a young woman now naked and covered in scars um draped in remnants of rags and weird bandages and stitching the flesh is the palest, most sickly color you've ever seen, almost like a corpse. 
and its feet in particular are caked in mud and filth, clearly from traveling outside in the moors. And you can see it has these needle sharp teeth, very inhuman looking, uh, with dried blood all across the teeth and the mouth. And you see ribbons of dried skin and flesh hanging from its talons, which look like weird sharpened pieces of old metal and rusted iron, much of which appears to have either replaced its fingers or uh, have been just jammed into the fingers to act as weapons. You see bits of bone protruding from parts of the body, uh, part of the face almost missing, and you can tell some horrible, disgusting creature of chaos. Its limbs are very elongated, uh, inhumanly so, and you can hear the crack of its bones every time it moves, particularly in the knees and the, the elbows. And there is a pale lilac fire of light in the eye sockets. Oh. And if you had been in Averheim, you would recognize this very similar to what the Geiss fought in the drug house where you found the joy root being made. But this one looks somehow different and, and even worse. Um, as if perhaps it is a more refined version of those creatures we saw before. Uh, we don't have a battle map for this, but I am going to put your tokens on the board here so we can do initiative and all that. So <laughs> let me get everybody. So Ison, and then Mr. Scar, and then we need the creatures. And we need Lavolpe and Ethanara. So, um, there he is. Doesn't matter, you know, like I said, we're not going to worry about a map here. So, Scar, you uh, you see this. Everybody, please roll initiative at this point. Rip, only a 10. And let's get a little bit of combat music, shall we? We could all pop out here and move this to the other monitors. I don't have to fucking look at it. All right, so uh, I think we're ready to start here. Everybody with their little sad, tired face. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so um, I have a question, um, a foundry question. When we have this combat up, um, is there anything on your guy's screen that indicates whose turn it currently is? Yeah. Um, if you go, for me, uh, on the combat tracker, it's highlighted in orange, is Athenara. Is there anything we really, on... Like, we don't press a button to say, like, our turn's done, so I don't think it really advances. Unless it's something we're supposed to be pressing to say, like, we're done. Well, the, the reason Maybe. I bring this up is because in the Alien game I played last night, the person whose turn it was had a circle around their character icon on the map. And, and then, how did you end your turn? There was actually a button to end the turn on the combat uh, tracker, which okay. uh, is something I can do as the GM. I can advance it, see, when I do this. Maybe okay. once, once they uh, make oh, it a said... check or something. I saw it say end turn there for a moment. Something popped up. Uh, select my, my character. Oh, I have an end turn button. Oh, okay. So when it is my turn, I'm on the combat tracker. I then can press a button to end my turn. Okay, but there's nothing on your token that shows that it's your turn right now? It basically looked like an orange ring around the token. No, that's oh. definitely not there. No, I it might be a mod thing. or something then. Okay, that's fine. I'm just wondering. Okay. Athanara, you are first. And you hear this uh, shattering from upstairs, and then uh, you hear this screech of some sort. What you... I guess I'm gonna start running, running in that direction, running upstairs. How far am I from upstairs? Uh, it'll take you at least a turn to get up there. You gotta make your All way. Right. It's a fairly big castle, but you know the nearest staircase, so. All I right, assume Lavolpe and Ison do the same thing? Yep. Yeah. They do. So, uh, Scar, this thing, um, 
does not notice you at first. It's clearly got its focus on uh, the Reichs Marshal. And I need you to please give me a cool test. This is versus moderate corruption. You've seen a lot of fucked up shit as a Reichsguard in your day. You've Chaos is no stranger to you, but man, this is some bizarre shit. And you can tell this is not a mutant. This is fucking sorcery and Dr. Frankenstein shit going on. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool, cool. Just a second. Looking at all these... um abilities he's a, he's a bunch of things for cool tests but they're very specific and none of them are for this situation okay mm -hmm. um would i get any bonus because i see the reichs marshal there fighting for his life um not against the corruption no okay oof Ooh. minus four you gain two corruption points as uh yeah this oh, no. this is rough actually i guess i'm sorry Corruption tests take place at the end of the combat, so I'll tell you what. Uh, you have to make a fear test anyway, so we'll count this as your fear test. Uh, it, is, it is fear two, so uh, yeah, um, uh, you either need to use a reroll here or be feared for now. Uh, I don't have any rerolls. I have resolve and resilience. Do you have anything do. that affects fear tests in your talents? Um, I do, but it's only it says only green skin. It says fearless green skins. Oh yes, you do have fearless against them. Okay. Um, beastmen green skins, yeah. Let's see. Right. Doesn't look like I have anything else. No, not not for fear tests. Nope. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I would give you. I would have given you a bonus to your fear because the Reich's Marshal is there, but it wouldn't matter. It'd be plus twenty. <laughs> yeah, I rolled an eighty-seven. Yeah, I mean, you're you're tired, you know, you see this thing, you've never seen anything like it, so even veterans from time to time, they roll fucking boxcars on their leadership test, which clearly you almost did, so... Uh, so yeah, Scar, you're frozen with fear. Uh, it is fear too, so again, you need... Um, oh, I can invoke fear, what does that do? Apply. Oh, I here, I apply it to you? Select I had already press the uh the fear thing on my character so it says you select the target to apply the effect okay i don't know how that works whatever who cares um anyway you are it is fear two so you need two success levels over an extended test uh you cannot move any closer to it until you get over your fear and if it comes any closer to you you must take a, another cool test otherwise you become broken Yikes. so you're like you're like stopped mid-step reaching for your sword as you see this thing slash at uh, at Hellborg. Uh, so let's do a good old attack here. All right, and we're going to do a secret roll for the Reichsmarschall. Actually, I'm just going to roll physical dice here because it's going to take too long to type shit out. <laughs> okay, um, so the Bliss Maiden, as it is called... Ah, uh, not that you'd know that. But it takes a swipe at the Reichsmarschall, and Scar, you are almost horrified, terrified almost, to see how fast this thing is. And it's almost it's almost like it's got fighting claws. That's the best kind of way these these iron claws look on its on its limbs. And it takes a swipe and despite his expert swordsmanship, he's only able to partially block the blow. And you see a, a long trio of gashes come across his uh, his sword arm, and uh, he gets hit. And this thing gains a point of advantage. Oof. Oh, wait, let me make sure I do something. Okay, there we go. So I figured out how to, when there's multiple things, how to not have them all get affected by the same token. Oh, okay. uh, there's, there's a setting you can change. So we could have 100 orcs now and we could make it so they don't all get <laughs> advantage at the same time. Amazing. Uh, and Why then... stop at 100? Make it 200. It's true. I don't know if we have enough room on the map for that. <laughs> no, we'll make room. Just stack them up. Okay, Scar, it is your turn. Okay. Um, and... Is there a way to use resolve or resilience to remove fear? Can use a point of resolve to ignore psychology uh, for a round. Um, and 
you can re also use resolve to remove one condition. Uh, I believe you count as having two right now. Hold on, check. Oh, no, I think you just I think you just are feared or not feared. I don't think there's I don't think it stacks like others. Oh yeah, it's just a check mark in your character sheet. So um, you could just burn your resolve, and then you would uh, get rid of that fear condition altogether. Okay, so but oh, it would wait, burn you know it. What? I'm sorry. It's not a condition. It's a psychology effect. So you, the only thing you could do is you could use the resolve to ignore psychology for a turn. Okay, and then do I test at the end of the turn? Uh, that's what I'm checking. Okay. Yeah. Yep, end of each round. Okay, and then does resolve regenerate at any point in the Resolve game? is the one you get back for sticking to your motivation. Okay, let me got to go back and look at this, guys. Yeah, short term. Okay, yep. Yep, okay. Uh, so he's going to use this one of his resolve, and uh, that helps him ignore his fear. Okay. So he's going to draw his sword and shield and uh, charge so in. take the fear token off, because when you're feared, you're at negative 10 when you would uh, affect something with your fear. So yeah, get rid of that so it doesn't um, fuck up okay. your roll. Gotcha. Okay, you may target. I'll put this here since, um, and I'll put, I'm going to put ice on over here with the other guys, because you guys are on the other floor right now just so we kind of have things spaced out where everybody's fighting. Okay, go for it. Um, is there any advantage for outnumbering it? Uh, yes. It is, it is It is two on one, so you have plus 20. Okay. And uh, was I able to charge into it to get a point of advantage? You're too close to charge. Uh, you okay. were literally just a few feet away. All right, uh, well. And also, oh. this thing... Oh, here, I can do this. Let me see if this works. <laughs> it Select a target. Hold on. Oh, wait. If I target you, tell me if this does anything. Yeah, it's a distract. There we go. Okay, so I have to target you like I'm targeting you with an attack. So these things have the distracting quality, just like the other ones. Um, this creature distracts or confuses foes, possibly executing a sephoric musk or nauseating reek, or maybe its appearance is bizarrely horrifying. All living targets within a number of yards equal to its toughness bonus suffer a minus 20 penalty on all tests. Oh, you can what? Only suffer this penalty once, no matter how many distracting foes there are. Oh my gosh. Well, you guys know what it last time. So, yeah, this is what the demonettes had. That's why we almost died fighting two demonettes. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that would do it. All right, well, uh, here goes nothing, boys. You do, you do get plus 20 for outnumbering, so. Crit. Scar the hero. Oh, shit. That, uh, that's pretty fucking impressive, bro. Not you can say lie. a sea bass. Rolling first. Th the negative? You th that oh, right. Dice. Yeah, how are you at a 94? Uh, did the... Yeah, I don't... I put in the plus 20. And then... I don't know. My fatigue is still there. Yeah, so it was distracting. Uh, well, let me see if I make... Let me make the defensive roll for it and see what happens. Uh, I mean, you are like the leader of the Rex Guard. I mean, you're... You're, you're, you're no schlub. <laughs> yes, but Scar's skill with a melee weapon is... 74. It yeah. should be at minus 10 overall. So it should be rolling against a 64, and it's rolling against a 94. Right. Is this tracking like not working? That's weird. I don't know. Unless it's actually giving you plus 20 for distracting. <laughs> for some reason, maybe it's broken. <laughs> yeah, it could be fucked up. I don't know. He just um, ignores it. Okay. So, it would have been against a 64, which is a success mm -hmm. by one. Cool. Uh, it failed by one. And you have a critical. So, roll me a critical at minus 20 as you strike it in the leg left leg. I'll get out my calculator early here, so we're not scrambling for it later. Twisted knee. Twisted knee. You twist your knee too far. Agility tests suffer minus 20 penalty for 1d10 rounds. Five Gucci. rounds. Alright, let's put that on this critter here. Here. Okay. Did that work? Let me see if let me just try something here if this actually puts it on his character sheet anywhere. No, it doesn't. 
Okay, so it does two wounds from that, and then, um, what's your total damage with a difference of one? It had negative one on its defense roll. Sorry, I had that private. Okay, um, let's see. So base damage plus ten strength plus you would have two success levels. Okay, so strength is five, so that's 15, 17 damage. How did you do more damage than what this did when it miscalculated it? I don't know. The sword says damage is 10, and strength is five, and then success well, the, levels is two. The, the damage 10 is already calculating your strength. Oh, then it would be 12. Yeah, dude, a fucking hand weapon does not do 10 base damage. Come on. Hey, man, I'm just reading. That was more than a gun. Come on. Come on now. I don't use guns. Okay. <laughs> Scar, Scar has never seen a gun. They so don't exist in this world. 10 plus success levels, which would be 2, so 12 damage. Okay. 12 minus all of its stuff. Okay, well, you do get a good hit on it, and you reduce its advantage that it had. Um, and that, I think, is going to be Scar's turn. That's going to yeah. end the round. Okay. Top of round two, uh, the three of you, as you're rushing down the hall and making your way up the staircase, you can hear fighting from upstairs. You hear more shattering of glass throughout the, um, the castle. You hear again these things hiss as they see you or as they see their target. They all hiss. Helborg. Uh, I will need the three of you to make, um, actually, I'll need everybody. Well, yeah, Scar, you're going to make your fear test from last round, the end of the round, and then I'll need you guys to make fear tests because you just see one of these things burst uh, through, a, like, a ceiling uh, window. And that's the meta cool test? Yes. Okay. And you said um, Scar would get some bonus because he's near yes, the Reich. Yes, you'll have Marshall. you'll have plus twenty because the Reich's Marshal oh. is there. Oh, damn, okay. oh uh, my guy is not cool at all. Oh, Holy man. shit! Oh man! Oh fuck! Well, both of you know Um, I think Lavolpe is going to use his his fortune point to just bump it up a success level. Ignore that, Sean. I'm just doing that to get rid of the opposed test. Okay. So, um, yes, you, so Scar, you snap to, you realize the Reichsmarshal's in danger, and you see how deadly these things are, you strike it, and that gives you, um, that gives you a little courage back, and you just swallow your fear, and it's gone, once you connect to this thing. Uh, La Volpe, you're using it for reroll, or just get plus one success level? Just, to uh, make sure he passes, yeah. Okay, well, it is fear two, so you need two successes. Oh, fuck. Well, I, I, already, I already used the fortune point. That's fine. You need one more. You're, But you are suffering. I think you're all suffering from fear? Yes. So all of you, please give yourselves fear conditions. Uh, okay. Lopopa, you need one success level. The other guys still need two each. Okay, do I... Should I just re-roll, or do I just go with the, the plus one? It's your choice. You can have plus I'd... one, or you can try to re-roll and get the plus two. Yeah, I'll try to re-roll. Oh, this is going to be great. Yeah! <gasps> okay. Dang. That is a critical success. I will give you an extra success level for that, so you are Ooh. not feared. As you pull it together, you have flashbacks of the horrible night in Von Brunner Palace, and your <laughs> fear cost the life of your good friend Mort, and you're like, not today, chaos scum! <laughs> not today, chaos scum! And, uh, yeah, you hold your nerve, but you see that Athenara and Ison just stop dead in their tracks as this thing, like, crashes through the, uh, the window in the ceiling and lands at the top of the stairs, blocking your guys' pass path. Uh, Scar, you hear another crash from somewhere further in the, um in the castle, like, down the hall somewhere. And, uh, yeah, you see another one rounding the corner at the other end of the hall. And then you also hear the crash behind you where the stairs are, but you don't see that one. So you see this one. We'll put it over here because it's more culture to you guys. To you and, oh, uh, boy. Okay. 
uh, Athenara, you are up. Um, let me see, what's the distance on distracting here? Yeah, you all, the three of you are in range of its distracting trait right now. And Athenara and Lavolpe, you would recognize this looks very similar to the creatures you fought in the house, mm -hmm. but they somehow look more finished, as if the okay. ones you saw in the house were perhaps tests. Also, the one you guys are fighting has this weird, bizarre, almost skull-shaped helmet on it, and this is what you guys see. Whoa. That's Very just cool. obviously, it's, it's like the bust, you know, the head and the chest. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the arms are all fucked up and dangling and shit. And uh, yeah, what do you do, Athenara? Uh, do I have a, a line of sight to any of them? Yeah, there's there's one at the top of the stairs blocking the three of your, your you guys from getting further up the stairs. Okay. I'm gonna... How... Uh, so we're, we're at the bottom of the stairs? Hey, in like a quarter of the way up the stairs. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna fire at it then. Okay. Is that the one closest to us? Mm-hmm. Put you guys over here because you're in a different part right now. Part of the house. Ooh. Oh, man. Now, did it... I don't think it's doing all the... Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't do distracting. That's why. Um, so... Let's make sure it's calculating that correctly. Your skill is 70 with a bow. Mm -hmm. It said I had plus 40. I'm assuming for distance. That's, that's for range. Yep. But you're at minus... 30 because it's minus 20 for distracting, minus 10 because you're feared, and also minus 10 because of fatigue. Hmm. Okay. It's 40, 50, 60. Hold on, let me double check. Yeah, because 70 plus 40 is 110. Is there anything else in your weapon that would give you a bonus to hit? Like your arrows or anything? Arrows, maybe, yeah. Uh, let's see. oh, pre precise. Get precise. plus one success level. Oh, that's too oh, no, success. That... Dust. Yeah, eighty. What else is doing here? Something is fucked up. I think because the elf arrows give you something, don't they? Plus one damage. Yeah, those two. I'm going through my talents just in case. I don't know. Is it fast shot? What is this? No, fast shot. Let me let me reload. Basically, prepare accurate for shot. Later. Is this it? Nope, that's extra damage. Oh, that's why you're getting all that damage. You got that too. Strike mighty blow. No. Nope. That's with melee weapons. Yeah, I'm not sure. Ah, man, I don't know. Uh, oh, I know what it is. It's your mutation. Oh, but my mutation. Any test not hurting another plus ten on test to hurt another creature. Oh, I get plus ten to hurt another creature. That's gotta be why it's doing mm. that. Okay. Yeah. I know it was minus ten for anything that's not damaging. So that's yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, is, is Foundry that smart? I don't know. Well, sure. let's just look at it one more time. So base skill seventy, mm -hmm. plus forty, for range. Mm -hmm. That makes it 110. Yeah. And then plus 10 for your mutation, that would be 120. And you're at minus 20 for distracting, minus 10 for fatigue, minus 10 for fear. You should be at plus 10, which would put you to an 80. So, so yeah, the, the sheet is fucked up somehow. So you actually, you do pass, but it's with zero success levels because you rolled exactly an 80. Okay. I think. Is it actually a critical? It's still uh, critical because of um, Impale. Impale, okay. Yes. Uh, okay, well, give me... Uh, so what is... Uh, now we got to figure out the fucking damage. Jesus Christ. Well, I guess just subtract five because it's zero success levels. So That'd 12. 12 damage. The and roll me a critical at minus 20, please. Sorry, listeners. I don't know why this character sheet's all jacked up with Athenara. Oh. Cheating else? Nope. It didn't give me the option to. Did you? Did you do a second one? Am I using the second one? What happened? No, it it didn't give me the option to. I have to go to the chart. Yeah, you do the chart. 
minus 20. Yes. Another twisted ankle. Okay. Put that on her character sheet. Eat. The work. It's the same thing that Scar did, so for five rounds. Okay. She takes a little bit of damage from that, and it was, what, 12 damage from your attack, right? Yep. Okay, so the exact same amount of damage that Scar did. Okay. And you gain a point of advantage. Leading us to Lavolpe, the unfeared. Well the enough, unscared, Fred. I should say. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll target that one in front of okay, us. Hold on. Let me do distracting. Oh, okay. There we go, and I'll just do it on Ison as well. Let's do it on all three of you guys. So. <laughs> there. You guys should all have distracting on you now, correct? Sure, yes. How would I know? Oh, it's a, I see the token on your character sheet. Or on your, there's an icon on your token. Oh, oh got it, okay. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go for it. Um, Put the very fast, got it. Yeah, so Lavolpe has both pistols uh, loaded so he's okay. going to to do wield uh, shoot are you this. do wielding two pistols yeah <laughs> oh shit what a king I think the so game's we're... about to get broken if I was not <laughs> do it, okay. we're, gonna, we're gonna give it a shot alright go um, for it do I get advantage cause we're outnumbering no that's only for melee Ooh, okay <laughs> All right, and yeah, come on, level pay. First shot is a 61, which misses. Oh, man. Uh, your second shot, though, would be a 16. Are you mm -hmm. able to, to do the second roll here? Because you're dual wielding? Oh, wait, opposed. Um, test failed on uh, Let me Let me do something here. Okay. I'm going to just do dodge just to clear that. It doesn't okay. actually dodge. Okay. Um, but you, you failed your shots. So it doesn't matter. You don't hit it. Okay. Now, are you able to do your second attack like you normally are? Uh, it's so it hasn't popped up a, a thing. It just says one pistol has gone off. Oh, you know why? Your other pistol isn't equipped. That's why. Well, it's not. They should both be. Uh, under your combat tab. Oh, it's not loaded? Or is that the one you just shot? That's the one that just got shot. What happens if you attack with the other one? I was just about to do that. Now I have a negative 30 modifier. Um, which is interesting. Well, you should because distracting. And, oh, distracting uh, and all that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what happens, I guess. Oh, it just did it. It just did its own thing. Okay. Well, it would have been a 16 because you're supposed to reverse the rules unless. Yeah. Unless you can't do a wield with ranged weapons. Let's check. Oh, if I can't do that, then bummer. Um... When armed with two weapons, you may attack with both for your action. Roll to hit with the weapon held in your primary hand. If you hit, determine damage is normal. But keep your dice. If the first strike hits, once it is resolved... Secondary hand can then target an available opponent of your choice using the same dice. You could shoot at different targets. Um, I don't see anything in here about a melee attack, so I think you can do... I mean, it makes sense because a duelist gets a bunch of gunpowder skills and stuff, so... So it would have been a 16, which definitely would hit. Um, however... I think it's calculating everything correctly here. Because your skill's normally a 60, it's going against a 50. There's a bunch of negatives, which are also probably at short range, at least. Yeah. Um, that's the only problem with using these, these boards here. That's fine. Uh, so the second one would hit, because you had a 16. Uh, so that is... How much damage? So it's a plus 9 base. Mm -hmm. And how many success, success levels would that be? Uh, a 16 would be five. five, I guess. Yeah, no, so four, four. okay, uh, so, 13. so nine plus four. Yep, okay, okay. 
All right, well, you strike, it gain a point of advantage. Uh, you do hit it fairly hard, and it shrieks in some sort of mockery of pain. And <laughs> Ice, you are up. I'm currently feared. Yep, so you can't get closer to this thing. So, I have no ranged weapons. I guess, is there anything I can really do? If you have resolve, you could... Use resolve. Oh, actually, I do have a resolve. To overcome your fear for yeah. a turn, or, um, yeah, because it's a psychology. It's only for a turn that it goes away? Yes. Uh, I mean, might as well do it. Okay. So, yeah, um, I'll spend my point of resolve. Alright. To drop the fear. So you're in melee. So then I will, if I, if I can charge, I'll charge. If not, I will, uh, attack the closest one to me. Give me an athletics check because you're charging up the stairs and it, you know, it has the high ground, Anakin. Um, if you fail, you can't get the charge bonus. So I'm rolling at a minus 30, so I guess fatigue plus minus 20 from this thing's ability. Uh, I believe so. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not passing anything. All right. All uh, right. So no, yeah. definitely not that. So that I will attack. Uh, I will take use the hand weapon. It makes sense, right? You're like by yeah. sheer force of will forcing yourself up the stairs. So you're like, ah, do I do I need to do this? Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. fail by four. Well, it could fail by five, which it does not. It blocks and gains a point of advantage. Yeah, I think it'll just be making enemies stronger with all these negatives. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, these critters have a new creature trait. Uh, from the new Imperial Zoo book called Grim. Um, this creature is particularly dangerous, and fighting it means never truly being able to gain the upper hand. If at the beginning of its turn this creature does not have at least rating equal to it, um, advantage points equal to its rating, its advantage pool immediately increases to the rating. If the creature currently has the surprise, unconscious, or untangled condition, it does not gain advantage. So basically, at the start of every one of their turns, if as long as they don't have one of those three conditions, they automatically get a point of advantage. They give us minus 20 if they get themselves bonuses? What? <laughs> you thought it was going to be right. easier, didn't you? All right. I mean, it's already hard. We've got fatigue. Hey, man, shouldn't have gotten tired. Should have passed that test. <laughs> I, I'm not the one writing this, okay? Get fucked, bro. All right. Well, the Bliss Maiden, uh, it turns to strike you, Scar, after you score a hit on it. Oh, I should roll for Hellborg. Hold on. Because Hellborg would definitely uh, let me roll to defend. Okay. Well, with negative three, Hellborg does strike it and do some damage. However, he does not have his rune fang, so he does not put this thing down. Damn, I wish we had the rune fang, boys. Maybe no. you shouldn't rely too much on the rune fang. <laughs> yeah, maybe you shouldn't have lost it. <laughs> All right, uh, so it's going to attack you here, Scar, with its iron claws. Cool, cool, cool. zero. Not great. Okay, uh, I'm using a shield. That is a 100, folks. Fuck. Double Sigmar hammers. Whoa, dude. Critical fumble. So you need to roll a critical fumble, please, sir. Yikes. Yikes. So I, I can just press that button, right? This is one of yep. those times that works. Yep. <laughs> it does work, believe it or not. Your melee weapon jars badly. Your weapon suffers one damage. Okay, which in this case is the shield. So uh, this thing just swings both of its claws like down, like scratching for your face, clanging against the shield and banging up against your armor. You take a total of 13 damage to the right arm. Okay. Um... So I'll make sure it doesn't have any special things here. No, it does not. Oh, I totally forgot to roll for something. Here. I'll do that in a second. Okay, go ahead and do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just uh. So the shield increases my defense by two. Okay, cool. Um, and I get plus one success level on the the test, so I only lose by a negative three. 
so only does 12 wounds i think okay um mm -hmm. and then all right so i take four wounds out of that not great okay uh and you lose any advantage you had it gains another one not 12 advantage one at two advantage it's not that good um and it just, it like rips through part of your shield scar, and the shield is what takes the damage. So uh, your shield defense is down to one. You can change that in your trappings. If you edit the shield, I believe mm -hmm. you can go into the details and. Uh, I think. Yes, yes, I can, yeah. Okay. Man, your armor's getting fucked up, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um. I forgot to roll for something very important here. These creatures have an ability called Ward, much like a Ward save in fantasy. Perhaps because they are magical, wear a special talisman, or are just plain lucky, some blows just seem to miss. Roll a d10 oh. after any blow is received. If you roll equal to or higher than the rating of the Ward, the blow is ignored, even if it is a critical. Uh... Their ward is not amazing, though. It is only a 9 out of... Uh, so if they roll a 9 or a 10, they ignore it. So I do need to roll that here. So Scar on your first hit. Hit the hit. And on the second hit from Helborg, it takes the hit as well. Did you hit it a third time or just the one time? Uh, I've only done... I've only gone once, so I only hit it the oh, one sorry, time. That's right. You're at the end of the combat. Okay. And then Ison, you missed... Uh, but the other two shots, so against La Volpe's shot, oh, almost had the 10, and against La Volpe, uh, the arrow of Athenara, it, so Athenara, you actually hit this thing with uh. your arrow, and it's like it just stops inches from, from hitting it in the leg. Oh, what a uh, Unfortunately, which means it does not have the critical twisted ankle that you did to it. And I, miss, uh, so I lose my advantage. Yeah, it wouldn't have hit. Um, actually... That's a great question. Hold on, let's see. The blow is ignored. Well, let's see. I think you're still going to keep advantage, because advantage is succeeding on a skill test. Right, because you hit it, it's just something made it yeah, not, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't make the shot miss, it just makes the shot not do damage, technically. So, okay. I, I would say rules as written, I would say you still get the advantage. Okay. Uh, but you did a bunch of damage to it, which was, what, 12 damage, I think? Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. That one's not looking quite as hurt as before. <laughs> um, and yeah, Lavope and FNR, you guys see that, and you're like, what the fuck? Uh, quite horrifying. Okay, the Bliss Maiden against Ison, striking with its claws. Make sure it's got its advantage. Yeah. Minus two. Oh my god, they're so oh, bad. Maybe a hope, a prayer. Oh, plus two. Wow, <laughs> against the 22. Little Ison <laughs> blocking desperately. Ooh, gain advantage, <laughs> they lose advantage. All right. Nicely done. Okay. And the last Bliss Maiden, Scar, the one that's down the hall. Oh, no. You see, this thing crouches in its weird, like, Jack Skellington manner with its long-ass limbs, and it launches itself up to the ceiling, clings to the top of the ceiling like a spider, and starts crawling the length of the ceiling at a terrifyingly fast rate. Um, and it, it drops down, diving at... I'm going to roll a d6 here. On a 4+, plus, it's going for you. On a 1-3, through three, it's going for Helborg. Actually, we'll give it a better chance on Helborg, because they're, they're sent to kill him. So, 5-6, it hits you. It's going for Helborg. Okay. No, my lord. So that's that's going to be this one back here. I'm going to roll for her. So, I'll put her next to you, because you guys are all kind of in one big melee right now. Uh -huh. Plus 3. And Helborg just manages to block uh, but uh yeah it's not looking great and we are on to scar all right well uh just keep hacking away okay lost my advantage doesn't Ooh, matter another crit hit. oh 
Oh my god. All right, let's see if it can block. <laughs> oh, Plus god six. damn. So you do get the crit. Uh, well, it will lose its advantage, though, because you, you do the damage. So give me the critical at minus 20, please. Okay, and that is arm. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me roll for its ward. Bruh. Oh, <laughs> so close. Wait, isn't that a one? Isn't that... Oh, the nine was that, right that was there. right man. there, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, jarred A arm. one. <laughs> okay, well, it can't drop its weapons because the weapons are infused body, but it does take a wound from that, so. And you gain a point of advantage. No, you don't. You right, I didn't. I didn't hit, but I did wound. Okay. All right. Um, round three. So, Scar, you are under the effects of fear again now, because it's been a turn. Um, But I Cause you, passed again. Oh, you passed. You're right. You're fine. Yeah. Um, Lavolpe passed, and I need you two to make fear tests if you're still... Oh, I'm sorry. Ison, your fear is back now, because it's been a turn. Oh, well, okay. So the two of you need to give me fear tests, you and Athenara. Yes. need two success levels to get rid of it. Got Not minus four, Ison with minus two. <laughs> not great. With fatigue and minus 20, I mean, it's not <laughs> it's gonna rough. happen. It's very yeah. rough. Everything, your armor's so heavy, Ison, you're like swinging in slow motion, just huffing and puffing. You're not even sure what the fuck you're looking at. You're just so out of it. Mm -hmm. um, like, part of it's you're terrified, that part's like, is this a dream? Like, this can't be real. Uh, Athenara, you are up. All right. Well, I'm pissed at Ison for being in my way, but I'm going to shoot anyways. In, what right. do you mean in your way? Wasn't he in combat with that guy? Yes. Oh, well, yeah. So he's technically there. Well, if you don't move, you can aim, and okay. then you'll ignore the negative 20 for shooting into combat. Okay. Unless you don't care about hitting ice, in which case you don't have to take that. You know, it's up to you. Okay, so I'll aim. <laughs> um, but I still suffer the minus 20 from... Minus 20 from distracting, minus 10, 10 from, from fear, from... minus 10 from fatigue, fatigue. plus 40 but... from range. So it should be against an 80, because plus 10 for your mutation. Okay. So just plus 10. Yeah. That is a yeah. 90. Okay, it actually did the calculations correctly this time, though. So your shot misses, and you will lose any advantage you have. Okay. And La Volpe, you are next. Cool deal. So I'm going to have to move a little forward, right? If you're going to get in the melee, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, am I a, am I gonna be able to stow the the two pistols and and whip out the his swords? Ah, uh, you're trying to do this with two weapons while running up the stairs. I'm gonna need an. Well, uh, would I be able to toss the pistols? You could just if you just drop the pistols, then yes, you can draw your weapons and and get into combat. Yeah, I think we're we're kind of past you know time is sensitive so okay let me get his shits together okay so yeah he'll status effects i love it he'll move up all right and engage okay um would i would i be at plus 20 for Outnumbering? Yes. Okay. Cool, so that's a wash. Neato. <laughs> oh, damn, I didn't do... D fuck. Well... That says a post. Yeah, I didn't do uh, do wielding. Well, we can... That's easy enough to figure out. Okay, so the first one hits. Uh, does its ward save pay off? Survey says 
Oh, oh it does. You. <laughs> your your blade just stops inches from hitting it. It's like there's a force field around it. And you take a you know a back swing. So you do get a point of advantage though. Oh no, no, only if both attacks hit. So um looks like you're about to hit, but you don't. So your second attack, you rolled really well though, 23 becomes a 32. 32, okay. so plus three. Plus three success levels. Um however. I don't think it's calculating your skill correctly here. Your skill is 65. Uh -huh. You're at plus 20 for outnumbering, minus 20 for distracting, minus 10 for fatigue. And I had one advantage. Oh, before. you have advantage. Okay, then you're fine. That's yeah. correct. Uh, so the second one is 32, which will be three success levels. It will try to block that. Ooh, and it plus does. five. Okay, so you do not connect with either. Oh, dang it. Uh, but nice attempt, though. Ison, you've got some help here. Uh, but yeah, it's it's bad. Well, since I am in melee with it, can I still attack it while fear you, or no? You you can still attack because you you can't get any closer to it. But if it attacks you, you'll have to take the test to become broken because then okay. it's like trying to get closer to you. So you can attack, but you'll have plus twenty because you outnumber. Uh, but then you've got all your negatives going on too. So I mean, maybe. So I think total you should be at minus 20 for this roll with everything. Yee, that looks cr Well, I do have one advantage still. Okay, so you, yeah, because you're at minus 40 with all the negatives. And then you should minus. be at plus 30 with Oh, this fear is an additional minus 10? Yes. Well, let's see how smart found it. Let's see if it does this correctly. Eh, with that roll, it's not really going to matter. Okay. <laughs> Uh... Now, is it doing it correctly on your sheet? Uh, got to do math then. Uh, Should let's be at a see. Total of minus kind of. ten. Total of so it gave me actually a flat even. So I have minus twenty from stats effects, minus twenty from the enemy's ability, plus ten from advantage, plus twenty from outnumbering. So there's an extra plus 10% somewhere that... You only have one point of advantage, right? Correct, yeah. Where's the extra... Why is it not... It should, be... it should technically be ruling against a negative 42. So there might be some effect the game's not taking into consideration. Yeah, something's... So it's a, it's a fail by two. Okay. I'm just looking at your... You're on something else. Okay. Um, so it, it wins. So it gets a point of advantage, and it is their turn. Now, luckily, it does not gain advantage if it already has at least one. So the one that you guys are fighting on the stairs doesn't go up to three, because its grim rating is only one. If it was grim three, then it would be really OP, but it's not. Um, Scar, again, I'm going to have these things roll to see if they attack you or Hellborg. One on you. Two on you. <laughs> we they Gucci. say we'll kill Hellborg after we kill this asshole. So they attack. Okay. Do it, boys. Obviously, I'm going to be pairing with my sick ass now scarred shield. <laughs> Your broken ass shield. Okay. <laughs> plus two. Oh wait, I'm sorry. It'd be plus four because. Uh, or no, no. There's no outnumbering. It's even. I should have made a token for Hellborg. I did not. <laughs> Minus one. Wait, no. Uh, but it goes up to zero. Well, then why is it telling me I won? Oh, no, you won, go, yeah. Why does it go up to zero? Because I have... Uh, the shield has the defensive quality, which means it gets it's, plus one. It, it's already calculating that. Because you'd be at negative oh, two yeah. in that roll. Rip. Okay. Uh, okay, so it hits for a total of 12 damage to your left leg. Uh, I think that puts Scar at zero. Does it? Yeah, because he didn't. He got wounded in the the previous fight pretty badly, so he only had like seven health. Exactly zero, or is it any worse? Uh, negative one. Okay, so you will take a straight up critical. No, uh, I'm sorry. I'll take a critical at negative twenty 
because it's under your, uh, what do you call it? You know what I mean. Where did I hit you? The leg? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, hold on. I might have been calculating that wrong. Oh, you get a twisted ankle, too. Just a second. Um, so he's got three, six, eight already, plus the two from the shield is ten. Your shield's down to one. Right, but the original one he took four. I only counted it as eight, not ten. So he would have had five health, taking... Are you still standing? I would still be up with one HP, I think. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I know Scar's super heavily armored, so that, that seems fine to me. Yeah, I I did not count the armor right, because he has a lot more armor than I used to, having only... Correct. Okay. Uh, well, the other one attacks you. Uh, they don't have outnumbering, luckily, because Helborg is there, despite them both hammering on you, but it cares not. Ew! Minus one against a 75, you lucky fuck. Uh... Try this again. <laughs> oh, a critical fumble. No. Okay. Um, I do. I have to burn a resilience to choose my role. Yes, and that that's gone forever. Okay, I will burn a resilience to choose my role, and obviously okay. make it a one. So something I learned uh, in our fight with the demonettes: when oh. you use resilience, not only do you choose the result of the roll. But regardless mm -hmm. of what it is, you automatically count as winning by one. So even if you're in a position what? where rolling a 1% would not make you win the test, it can still make you win the test by one. So when I was fighting Hellborg and Schwartzel at the same time, parrying their blows, I would have passed by one? You would have, yes. Mm -hmm. But you got a cool scar out of it, so I think it's, it's a so wash. Yeah, something I uh, I did not realize, um, which we learned uh, we learned last week. So. I feel slighted. <laughs> we should. We should. Well, you're free to read the rules too, so you know. Fuck off. Uh, uh, you got me there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll your critical fumble, Scar. Uh, well, it's, it's now a, a one percent. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, so it's a one percent, which means uh, how many did you pass by? Well, I'm defending, so it's as long as it's by... Oh, that's right, that's uh, right, you're fine, so you block. Okay. But does that count as a crit that I give him? Yes. So roll a critical at minus 20. Is that on the head? Yeah. No, a 10 is actually the, the arm. Okay. 1 arm. through 9 is the head. I think it was 10 in the second edition, but they changed it for some reason. Well, if I'm rolling a 1, isn't that a... You, you reverse the die roll to determine oh, your hit location. Oh, gotcha. Rip. Uh, let's roll this up. Horn Torn muscles. muscles. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Wow, that was really slow. Uh, it gets minus 10 to all tests involving the arm, and it takes the wounds from that. Oh, gains a bleeding condition, and it takes two wounds. All right, well done, Scar. What arm did you hit? Um, left arm. Yeah. Whatever, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's got two claws, but anywho, uh, that was on the defense. So Scar on the offense now. Oh, sick! And I have an advantage point. Um, I will continue to try to hit this one that. Myself and Helborg have been fighting for our okay. fucking lives here. All right. Gonna be the one on my left. Okay. That, Plus two. That's good. Can it? Well, it's got two advantage. Oh, oh so plus easy. five. Up to three advantage. It's charging its laser. You lose a point of advantage, Scar. <laughs> it's lame. Rip with your one wound. Okay, top of the round. Uh, Scar, you hear and then see the room next to Helborg's. You see the door get thrown open and to your surprise and probably a little bit of shock, you <laughs> see the 
buck naked form of Rufus come charging out and he's wielding his ancestral sword and he sees these things and without any sort of fear or concern for his own personal safety comes charging in swinging the sword at these things with like a half drunk it sounds drunken battle cry you're guessing it you know because he was just asleep probably um and he takes this wild wild swing uh at the thing and let's see if he hits uh well actually let's see which one he hits first okay on a four plus it's the one that's injured really badly okay it's the one that's bleeding we'll have her roll all right uh it blocks the attack but you see that when he swings at this thing it hisses and takes a step back as if it's afraid of something. All right, everybody, take off your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Just swing around your other sword. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can turn these into tokens, can I? No, I can't. Okay, whatever. All right. Uh, Athenara, you're up. I need another fear test, please. Okay. Uh, so. You're rolling against a four? Uh, no, I should be rolling against a 14, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was Are weird. you sure? Because you're at negative 40. Oh, well then, yeah. A four. Uh, that, would, that would be explaining yep, why I'm it's so hard four. to hit these things. We are not breaking these fears. Just, so you're pretty much on your own. Just FYI. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I've got Rufus here. Why can't I... select tokens what's going on here let's reload really quick here sorry hmm. i can't select any tokens so i can't roll dice hmm. um is anybody else suffering from fear ison i think you still are oh yeah do i have to do something do i have to make a test now is that what's going on yeah fear test at the end oh of the uh i mean <laughs> i mean it's going to fail this is, there's no way i feel like it's a five percent Four percent. <laughs> Roll the seventy-eight <laughs> percent. That's not gonna do it. No, it's not. Oh. oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to attack with that creature that two of you are fighting. But I'm still loading back in here. So, all right. Well, let's give it a minute. Oh, wait. It's done. That was fast. Okay. Yeah. Well, the uh, the wireless card is clearly working. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm gonna roll four plus. It's hitting Lavolpe. One through three, it's hitting Ison. Ison, I need another fear test uh, to see if you become broken or not because you're already if, suffering from fear. Uh, yeah, it's not the oh, 96, Doug. 96. <laughs> it's rolling against a five. Okay, well, make your make your defensive. It does attack. You get to make your defensive roll first, then you run. So uh, okay. Uh, I fail by six. Like I, I, I took out the shield. Okay, it has plus five. Uh, so that's going to be 14. 20 damage to your <gasps> body. Here's the good news. I ain't running. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you down? 20 damage uh, totally puts you down? Wait. You got a lot of armor, wait, I have bro. really armored. Holy shit. You're yeah, a right scar knight! Come on, with your shield! Eight, introduction to my body? Yeah. Uh, that, oh, that was... my, 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 my max health is 12. So. You also... Do you have a shield out? Oh, oh yeah, the shield out too. Yeah, the shield adds extra damage reduction. Um, so that takes me from full health to dead perfectly in one hit. Well, but the shield... If, you know... The oh, shield yeah, adds the extra sure. armor. That's why it's eight damage reduction. Oh, damn. Rip. Yeah. So it's, it's 20 damage. I have eight damage reduction. My max health is 12. So that's a one shot. It's a perfect um, one shot. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Just enough. Okay. Ison down for the count. Uh, He's not running, though, folks. He's not, he's not running. Oh my god. He, he ain't no punk. He's staying 
<laughs> he fought to his last breath. What did I? Where he, did I hit he you? He'll breathe like once, but you know, hey. <laughs> where did I hit you? Oh, uh. The body, right? Uh, body, yeah. Okay. Minus twenty coming up here. A forty-three becomes a low blow. Ouch! We'll just put that on your character. Twenty damage to the nuts. The yeah. <laughs> Uh, make a hard uh, endurance test minus 20 or gain three stun conditions. Uh, just, yeah, it's at those right now. <laughs> yep. Yep. You need a 1%. So, yeah, probably. Uh, is this stunned? Yeah, one, two. Oh! 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 Is wow, that oh, hard? Oh, sorry, hard. I, I minus that. 20. I, I didn't get the minus 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, then you can't pass, right? Nah, I can't pass. Like, 1% solves everything, but no, nah, I can't yeah. pass that. Okay. Yeah, you guys see Ison just crashes down the stairs and slides down a couple stairs, clutching his groin. Uh, you're not sure what kind of permanent damage might have been done there. I mean, it is a Celestia Demon, so, you know. <laughs> they know their target. <laughs> makes sense. It does, right? Stay on target. Okay. Uh, okay. That was the end of the round, so we're on to Athenara. Yep. But I cannot, I didn't pass my cool test. Okay, but you may still attack. Alright, so I'm still take my shot. Yep. Uh, save as last time. All the same modifiers. It's still in combat. You can still aim. At least Ison's not in the way anymore. <laughs> yeah, you got a clear line of sight. <laughs> He's not in the way. Well. Lavolpe's nimble. Oh, a six. Ooh, Boom! Yeah, Shotgun maybe. bow goes off. Does the ward save kick in, though? That's the real kicker here. Mm, nope. Ooh. Definitely not. 16 damage to the body. That is really going to fuck it up here. Um, it's got some armor. It is barely standing. However, it does lose the two advantage it had. Now's your chance, Lavolpe. FNR, you gain a point of advantage. FNR or Lavolpe, you gotta make it happen here. Okay. Here we go, 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 go. We're gonna finally do fucking dual wielding. Proper. Um, Proper fighting. And, I mean, Ison's still there. He's not running. <laughs> he is so still is, conscious, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'll, so he won't go so unconscious. Little... I mean, no, you that don't still know. still counts, right? No, get the fuck out of here. I mean, I don't know how conscious you can be when you get one hit from full health <laughs> dead in your nuts, but hey, whatever you say, boss. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think technically by the rules, if he was still, if he wasn't stunned, yeah, he would, you would still count as outnumbering because he is still conscious and you can still oh, make but he's rolls. Stunned. But he's got three stun conditions, so he's just. Oh totally shit! He's right he's now. yeah okay. Yeah, he's right. at another minus thirty because of the stun conditions. So. Well, holy shit! All so right. He's at like well, minus minus seventy to all tests. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll 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 give this a shot. Here we go. Okay. Nope, that's a no. But it could still fail. Doesn't have any advantage. Remember. Hmm. Oh, so close. Minus four. All right, do your second attack. I just did it again. Why did it do it again? I don't know. But your second attack would have been a oh, only a seventy-eight. That's slightly yes. better. Yes. Well, I think it's another negative four. Negative four, yeah. Negative. Oh, <laughs> negative three. So close. Wow. Okay. Locks both attacks. That's nuts. Ison, you are on the ground. It is the worst day of your life. Yeah. Bliss. Uh, accurate. Uh, oh, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, Hellborg on the one that you're fighting, Scar. Come on. Dude, he rolls an 81. Ugh, it's bro. Great. Even with uh, Rufus there assisting us? Uh, oh, you're right. No, Rufus is attacking the other one. Oh, rip. Hold on, it rolled a plus zero. 
The Lord's gotta win. He's the Reich's Marshal. Well, he's got distracting on him too, though, and he's injured. So no, just barely this thing blocks. It's already maxed out on advantage, though. <laughs> God damn. Um, okay, and then Rufus already attacked this round, so it is going to attack uh, Helborg. Plus oh, three. No. Oh, he rolls a 29. Ouch. Hellborg somehow blocks the attack. Nice. Do you think it loses its advantage? The opening you need. Uh, the other Bliss Maiden tries to attack Rufus, but you can see um, it is like visually cowering from him. And. It, well, it rolled really well, though. Um, it does score a strike against Rufus across his fat stomach. It's just a flesh wound. It's not very, very deep, but he's not wearing anything right now. So you do see some blood trickling out, but he seems like unfazed. He's like a total battle lust right now. La Volpe, one-on-one, -on -one, sort of. Come on. Ew, minus two. Now's your chance to live. Fine. <laughs> Don't fuck up, bro. Uh, shit. Um, holy fuck, how am I at that many now? Uh, okay. Oh, oh my Ooh. god, La Volpe with a 14. <laughs> You have advantage. This thing loses advantage. Athenara, you see somehow La Volpe just, he's put it all together. He's figured it out. And he <laughs> is keeping this thing distracted, waiting for you to fucking put it down. Scar, with one health. <laughs> like R. Kelly, I too am fighting for my fucking life right now. <laughs> all right, we're going to try this again okay you do have plus 20 uh because you and helborg are focused on this one okay that that helps that helps and it does not have any more advantage it's my my negative is no longer massive it's now just okay. marginal <gasps> a boom oh two percent is it enough 15 oh. damage ward save no, don't you fuck it there, Chris. Oh, there it is! The oh. Oh. oh, Scar, what a champ. You do get advantage, but oh, the unholy energies of chaos. Oh. Natasha's Bliss Maidens are fucking for real. Bruh. Uh, <laughs> this guy takes a wound from bleeding. Good, fuck him. And he loses advantage. <laughs> Athenara, another fear test, please. One day, you will not be scared. But today nope. is not that day. Okay, well, you can still shoot the thing. Yep. If you could just score a hit with your shotgun bow. <laughs> oh, that, that ought to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ward save. Ooh. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> Yeah. If it rolls a 10, it just ignores the damage. Is that that one? If it rolls yep. a 9 or a 10, it ignores the damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. You get another point of advantage, though. You keep hitting. You've got to be pretty good right now. Uh, La Volpe, it just won't die. What do you do? Kyle, you're muted. Oh, sorry. So sorry. Um, you should be. Uh, yeah, Le <laughs> Le Volpe's gonna Le Volpe's gonna do a wield again. Okay. And uh, yeah, here we go. That's a. Uh... Oh, that was a seven. I thought it was a sixteen. That that was some bullshit. That was a cock die if I ever saw one. Oh fuck! Critical fuck. hit on the defensive. Uh, that is in the left leg. All right, Le Volpe, here you go. Minor leg cut. Okay. How could dare. Be worse. Uh, you just get a bleeding condition and take a, one. two wounds. I'll put it okay. on with the, the thing. Oh, shit. It does it automatically. You 
to just be the one. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, the second attack would be a, what, 67? Correct. Not, so not great. Minus two. It passed. Yeah. All right. Neato. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. This fucking guy. Oh, uh, Rufus. Rolls a 5%. Uh, and this thing gets a critical fumble <laughs> with an oh, 81 suffering another it. torn muscle I think this thing has two torn muscles now it does um, and it takes a massive it does the ward save protect it at all no this thing takes a massive hit from Rufus, screeching in pain to the point that you guys have to cover your ears. And it looks, if it could know fear, you imagine it would be showing that right now, Scar. Uh, the other one attacks Helborg. Does Helborg go before it? Helborg went, oh, you're right, I'm sorry. So sorry. Helborg gets a 37. Really? And oh, a hundred! <laughs> Another critical failure. Another oh joint muscle. <laughs> oh Jesus! Natasha needs to stitch these things up better. They're falling apart. <laughs> uh, Ignoring the like two ward saves that saved them. Okay. Ward save? No. Helborg finally puts one of these things down. Fuck you. Dead. Bullshit. Dead. Okay, the other one fighting Rufus uh, is, you know, not doing great. Um, minus six. Damn. Uh, Rufus, he's, he doesn't really block it so much as this thing just whiffs completely. Uh, you see, like, Scar, he's just like swinging his sword like left and right, like a kid swinging a baseball bat like in front of him. Uh, there is no skill to what this guy is doing right now, but for some reason the creature is like floundering. And then the other one, La Volpe, pick it high or low. Uh, hi, baby. Ooh. It leaps uh, away from you. Oh. It does this springing jump. It jumps up to the ceiling with wicked fast speed, and it, like, scuttles along the ceiling like a spider, and it launches itself at Athenara. Oh. Athenara, um, you may... You don't have a melee weapon out, so you okay. can try to dodge. Plus four. Plus four. Ah. So you take 12 damage to the left arm. You lose your advantage, and unfortunately, you need to make a cool test. Otherwise, you're going to become broken because you're still feared. Okay. You are broken. Oof. Lavolpe, you see in horror as this thing does that and strikes Athenara. You see Athenara just lose his shit, clearly overcome by complete fear. And he goes a running. Um, yep. Uh, broken. You are terrified, defeated, panicked, or otherwise convinced you're going to die. On your turn, your move and action must be used to run as fast as possible until you are in a good hiding place beyond the sight of any enemy. Then you can attempt to rally. Scar! Your own. All right, yeah. With one HP, he's going to stumble his way towards that last one that's fighting Rufus. Okay, you may charge. Uh, <laughs> it's it, like, like I said, every time Rufus swings this thing, it's taking steps back. So it's like almost back to the staircase. And as you charge, you can see uh, Ison's crumpled form on the stairs and then La Volpe and Athenara fighting another one of these things. Oh, no. So you All right, may I will charge. definitely charge. Yeah. And plus 20, because you don't number it now. Noise. Ew. Oh, so close to a crit. Another critical fumble. Noise. Another torn muscle. 
Oh, it takes a point of damage as it hits itself. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that, um... Does it get a wards? No, I'm not going to get wards if it's stupid. Uh, how much damage you got, bro? Uh, I mean, the game is telling me 15. Ooh, ward save? <laughs> oh, oh, no, it is down as you slay the second one, Scar. Well done. Yeah. Gain another point of advantage. Nice. Because that is a significant bow for sure. Next round, Lavolpe, if it didn't give you a point of damage from bleeding, please take one. And Athenara, you must yeah, let me flee. Check. Which, unfortunately, do you have any advantage, Athenara? I didn't. Oh, no, you wouldn't because you got struck, didn't you? Uh, no, I, I lost my advantage last turn, actually. Let me take that off. Unfortunately, that means okay. it gets a attack on you as you try to run. Okay. An unopposed attack at plus 20. Yeah. It would gain advantage, but it's already maxed out. So sorry. Plus three, 12 damage to your body as you turn tail. Okay, that's gonna drop me. What does that drop you to? Uh, I think negative one. Okay, so it is a critical then at minus 20. Oh, 88. That becomes arterial damage. Uh-oh. Gain four bleeding conditions. Fuck. Oh, shit. That's until, how people die. Until you receive surgery, every time you receive damage to the body, gain two more bleeding conditions. Oh, oh fuck, man. Uh... You see Athenara as he turns to run oh. this thing like Mortal Kombat style just drives its claw like through his back and then out through his chest. You see him just crash forward chest first down the stairs, blood spiraling as his body goes tumbling. You're up, Lavolpe. Um Can I where can I move? You can well, you're above it now because you're up. You're higher up the stairs than it is because you know Lavolpe was or Athenar was standing back. So uh -huh. okay, yeah, you're, you're like it... you're like three quarters of the way up at the stairs, and it's like a quarter of the way up the stairs. So there is a little bit of distance between you guys. Okay, I... would I be able to engage with it still? Oh yeah. Okay. You can you can charge. And I will give you plus 20 because you have the high ground and you're kind of attacking it from behind right now. Okay. All right, so we'll do charging. Yeah, we'll say, I mean, it's kind of distracted reveling in, you know, thinking it's killed the elf. Oh. So don't fuck up, is what I'm saying. And you said plus 20? Yes. Well, that's high... just a watch. <laughs> you have the high ground, Anakin. Oh boy, I hope so. <laughs> here we go. Put you over here. All right. Oh. Well. Are you dual wielding? Yeah. Okay. Well, that might be a good choice because your next roll is going to be a seven. That's right. <laughs> well, as okay. as surprise, no surprise, it blocked the first attack with plus yeah. seven. The second attack, though, is going to be a seven, which is six success levels. Can it block that? It does not Ooh. with a 90. It So as you charge down the stairs, it slaps the, the first weapon away, uh, which mm. I think is your rapier. Um, yeah. And then the second one, which is the sword breaker, comes down and you just, you just hammer it right in the uh, whatever the seven is. The head! That's a headshot. It's a kill oh, shot, shit. baby. Does the ward save? Does its cursed helmet protect it? No. With a two, that is enough damage, Lavolpe, to fell the beast. And it crashes to the ground, leaving the oh, yeah. maidens dead. Um. At this point, Isen, you probably pass out into unconsciousness. And... 
Am I Scar, able to... Uh, oh, Scar, Scar, you would have an... A I'll give you an action before Athanara has to make his bleeding test. You can see... Uh, you can see both him and Ison on the ground. Um, and I'll say that you probably saw... Well, you saw Athanara get stabbed, so you know he's fucked up. You can't tell with Ison if he's unconscious or, like, dead or dying. Okay. Um... But I would say just by looking at them, you're a veteran, you saw how bad he got stabbed. You imagine he's in worse condition than Ison right now. He is just covered in blood. And I don't see, like, a pool of blood underneath Ison. No. No, you do not. <laughs> Alright, I will race over to, uh... I, well, race over. I will slowly <laughs> drag my broken body to towards uh, <laughs> Athanara. Your one health, man. What a champ. Oh. What a champ. Uh, and I will attempt to heal him with okay. the heal skill. Can I assist? So, yes. Uh, so you can get plus 10 to this heal test. Now, he has four bleeding conditions, <laughs> so you need four success levels here uh, to heal that. Completely. All right. Every success level gives you one. 31 that's pretty good okay that is three success levels so three of your bleeding conditions are gone do you have any fortune points left i do no no i'm gonna scar oh. <laughs> uh i think i only had one so i don't think so okay well you're down you can get rid of three of those so you're only okay well, Scar's giving you a much greater chance of not dying here, Athanara. It will be the end of the round, so you only have a 10% chance of dying instead of a 40% chance of dying. Okay. Uh, so, what, is that an endurance? Nope, you just roll a D100. D100. You roll a 10% or less, you bleed out and die. Let's see if I did this right. Uh, nope. Uh, it's slash R space 1 D100. 99, okay. You Ooh. are good. La Volpe, you take another wound because you're bleeding. Oh, and ouch. if you if you would like to heal him, you may attempt. And obviously, Scar assist as well. can assist. Yes. Yep. Plus ten for the assist. As we wait with bated breath. Am I am I doing the healing? I imagine so. It's your turn. Oh, okay. So it's it's me and plus plus ten. So I got only a plus. Look at all these ten. fucking icons on your tokens, man. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't even see Ison's token. There's so much shit going on. Here we go. Oh no, a That's 91. A fucking no. Do you have a fortune point? No. Oh. I, already, I had the one. And um, it's gone now. That could be bad. Yeah, that could mean I hurt myself, right? Well, you're not. You're gonna. Well, I'm a. Are you healing yourself rather than Athanara? Oh, I, I thought I was. <laughs> He's I mean, got this. I mean, it would. The, the meta game choice would be, oh, of course, I'm healing myself, so you don't kill Athanara. But man, what a dick move. Well, well, yes, but also if if uh, if I knew that it was Athanara, then there would it would only be minus five. Because isn't it like minus ten to heal yourself? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, so at least I didn't fucking really kill him hard or did as you, hard did you, did you give yourself a negative 10 on that roll is that what you're telling me yeah yeah oh okay yeah um, so if this is for Athanara then I only fucked up you, uh, you a little bit you tell me who are you healing I'm not going to tell you who to heal well I mean I mean you I'm know not... he's on the ground dying so if you decide to yeah. heal yourself that's totally fine if if this is gonna be how f much I fuck up, I'll fuck up myself. Thank you very well, much. Well, you you can't you can't. What was your intent? Not after, you can't. Okay, I saw the roll. I'm gonna. It choose. was no no no. It was it was my intent to to heal La Volpe. Okay, fair enough. Um, then let us see if that uh kills you, you know, or something. Uh, I think past uh a certain point i take well, damage well yeah. this that's to heal wounds you're trying to heal a bleeding condition so um i don't know if it makes you bleed more uh, <laughs> just, just <laughs> cut it open more 
A failed healing test could potentially cause wounds if your intelligence bonus plus success levels is less than zero. On an astounding failure, your Fuck. patient will also contract a minor infection. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let's go look at bleeding really quick here. Holy fuck. Could it get any worse? Oh, level pay. Conditions. But really, oh, Kyle. <laughs> Welcome to Warhammer, folks. So, like, in real time, you're just gonna see Lavolpe look at a look at a cut, stab himself with a infected knife, and then just drop right next to Athenara. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, god. Let's see. All right. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. It clearly states that if you get an astounding failure, which you did, you take uh, damage. However, mm -hmm. you are not trying to heal wounds, you're trying to stop bleeding. So instead of you taking damage, I'm going to say you take another bleeding condition as you okay. cut yourself open even more, trying to staunch the bleeding or, you know, something. Also, you gain a, uh, what was it? Um, a minor infection? That ought to be fun. Yes. Yeah, let's let's see what that's all about. How do I I have to find it here. Um Fuck, I don't even know what that's on. Uh we'll worry about that later. Um Okay. <laughs> okay. Well I'll write so, it down. Scar, <laughs> you may attempt to heal Athenar. <laughs> no. Unless you want to heal Lavolpe and make him bleed. No. Her. Leave me be. <laughs> I deserve this. Yeah. Scar, in the middle of trying to resuscitate Athenara, sees the baby in the corner. Pull back and say, it's time for my own healing, and then fall unconscious. <laughs> then cut the shit out of himself. <laughs> oh, you fuck it. Yeah, Scar will attempt to uh, to heal the final bleeding condition off of Athenara. Do That's I get any minuses or bonuses in attempting to heal someone else? Was that what you guys if, were saying? If Lavolpe's helping, you get plus 10 for the assist. He's unconscious, isn't he? No, Lavolpe's just bleeding out. Profusely. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. He's got a few more turns before he's dead. Nope. <laughs> oh my god. Mamma mia. <laughs> a 99, but... which is a critical failure. Right. And it's an astounding failure. Fuck. Do you have any points you want to use? <laughs> Do I want to burn my last resolve? <laughs> I'll I'll put it this way. You have an astounding failure, which is going to give him another bleeding condition. You have a critical. You're going to give him two more bleeding conditions. All right. I, I will burn my last uh, resolve point to make it a one so I can bring him back from the brink. That's resilience, not resilience. Resolve. Resilience. That's the one, yeah. Dang. Okay, that's pricey. You're burning your last resilience, then. Correct. So you are out of points. Yeah, that's that's it for that's <laughs> it for Scar. All right. Well, Athenara, you must have impressed this rather grim human because he's used the last of his meta currencies to make sure you don't <laughs> fucking die, which I guess is the least he could do as he's killing you. Um, <laughs> Well, the, the other guy's about to die, too, so, you know. Well, he's yeah, but he's killing himself. Know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. yeah. That's why I've got, to, I've got to save Athenara so that when I attempt to save Atilian. Clearly, clearly, Lavolpe wants to die here, so. <laughs> um, okay, so you're going to turn that into a one, which is plus six success levels. So, Athenara, you are no longer bleeding. You are no longer dying. You're just unconscious. Okay. Um, However, Lavolpe, you are still bleeding. You take two more wounds. Oh. And mm -hmm. I will need a heal test, please. You can do it straight up. I'm going to assume that Scar is going to help you, so that'll cancel out the negative 10. Yeah. Wait, I'm at negative 20, though. Uh, oh, wait. Get rid of distracting. That's gone. Oh, so it's straight up zero. Cool. You can del delete distracting off your character sheets. Oh, let, oh me, let me do that first. Where's that? 
I think it's under effects. Under effects. Oh, yeah, I see it. Cool. Bye. Great. We have a winner? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't bleed anymore. You don't cause any more bleeding conditions, but you don't cool. heal any. Does anybody cool. have any bandages, maybe? I do. Oh my god, really? <laughs> well, yeah. Doesn't that part of the heal test, though? No. Read the fucking oh. rules. I think it gives you a bonus or some shit. Nice. Let's go to consumer's guide. Oh, like, why has it got me in chat? Fuck. Um, there we go. What, I don't even know if this is under packs and containers, maybe? I don't know. Let's see. Bandage. A successful heal or dexterity test removes one extra bleeding status, so I'd have to be successful okay. to use it. All right. We'll assume you're using bandages, so. Which I, I mean, hey, I knew that, so that's that's why I did because I was just I was just rolling really bad. No, fuck. All right. Um. Okay, so you tried, Ison. You can try now on him. This is the same turn. Um, Scar. I'm sorry, Scar. I'm looking at Ison's token. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do this, boys. Okay, so I'm trying on um, La Volpe. Can he assist me in that? Yes. Okay. I think that's fair. Giving me, giving you a thumbs up a from the ground. A seven. Ooh. Okay. Your bleeding conditions are gone as you feel yourself getting woozy. You're pretty, what, you got like, what, five, six wounds left, it looks like? I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm, now I'm too fatigued. Oh, yeah, because you get a fatigue condition with all your pleading conditions going. <laughs> Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I can't find it in Foundry, um, La Volpe. Uh, I'm not sure why. Hey. But, oh, wait, here it is. Minor infection. There we go. Looking oh, can you spot. can you drag I it in? I think I can. Let me attempt this. I think it's the first time we've had this happen. Uh minor infection slow healing wounds with a modicum of swelling and heat are extremely common most heal of their own accord in time so few worry about it until it's too late and Moore's portal opens uh so let's see what happens here did that do anything when i put it on your character sheet uh i don't it see it oh yeah. where effects Contraction, if you well, you automatically contracted it because of the negative result on the thing that said you just get a, a minor infection. Um, incubation, 1d10 days, duration, 1d10 days. What is this? Okay, so I need you to roll a d10, and that is how many days it takes until this takes effect. Okay, so what is it? R slash R. I if you can roll. Um, slash R space 1D10. Okay. So all diseases have an incubation period of some sort, usually one to several D10s, usually days or minutes. In this case, it's days. So in one day, you will contract this minor infection. I need you to roll another D10 to see how long it lasts. It's D10 days. Days? Okay, it's not terrible. It can be a whole lot worse. And during this minor infection... It has the following symptoms. Lingering, malaise, and wounded. So, let's look up what those do. Lingering, you have an infection that just refuses to go away. Indeed, you fear it may be getting worse. After your disease reaches the end of its duration, attempt an endurance test with the difficulty marked on the symptom, which luckily for you, it is easy. So, it's a plus 60 endurance test. Um... Uh, if it's a marginal failure, it goes on and on and on. So if you pass, then it's gone. If you fail, it either stays for another 1d10 days. If it you fail astoundingly, it turns into blood rot. Ugh. Well, with plus 60, I don't think you can actually do negative 6. Um, okay. And then you also have malaise. 
You don't feel well at all. You are tired, find it hard to concentrate, and are just generally ill. Take a fatigue condition that you can only remove when you recovered from your illness. Okay. And finally, you have wounded. You have a wound or open sore that does not heal properly because of an infection. For each wound symptom you have, you cannot heal one of your wounds, which stays open and sore, possibly seeping foul-smelling pus. Ugh. Every day you must take a plus 20 endurance test or gain a festering wound. Uh, however, this one, a daily successful heal test ensures the wound is clean and does not require the endurance test to get further infected. Okay. Um, the other two have treatments as well, but they generally require you to get some sort of medicine. Um, okay. For the lingering effect, cures for lingering infections are commonplace, usually relatively cheap, rarely costing more than a shilling. However, almost all are fake or based on faulty lore. Any bought cure has only a 10% chance of being genuine, but if so, it will negate the role to make an endurance test on the correct day to see if it continues. However, you're not really near any place to get that. And uh, the other one, Malaise, Medicine training malaise costing anything from a few pence to a handful of silver is usually genuine with a 75% chance of success. So basically you have these three things in a day and then after three days of that, there's a chance that it'll go away. I'll invoke wounded here. Um, what does that do? Make sure. Uh, well, that's every day. Okay, we don't have to do that now. Okay. Yeah, so you're a little fucked up, Lavolpe. You got yeah. an infection. It's uh, a boo boo. I don't think anybody else got a critical hit during that combat, though. Let's end combat here and see what happens. So, give me a recap of everything that just happened there, because a lot of shit just went down. So, these three creatures, which Scar, you can tell, clearly have been sent to try to hunt down and murder Schwartz Hel or, uh, Helborg. Uh, as you speak with Athenar and Lavolpe, eventually, they explain that these are creatures that the cult had in their possession. You all put two and two together and realize this is Natasha's handiwork. However, you have dispatched them. Um, Athenara is, con well, he's unconscious, but he is alive, no longer bleeding. Ison is conscious and alive. He's just, uh, or, or he's unconscious. And Lavolpe is no longer bleeding. Everybody is fucked up, but you are all still alive. Um, however, we had some critical wounds. It's telling me we need plus 60 endurance tents tests for minor infections for everybody except Scar. Hey. Uh, Lavolpe, you don't need a test. You've already got one. Oh, I don't... I'm not taking one? I, you've already got one. I don't think it stacks. But the other two, you guys took... Uh... <laughs> Eisen fails. Because he's got so many negatives right now. He actually, he's at minus six. Oh, no, he probably doesn't have distract anymore. Never mind. No, he should right, be okay. I, I'll just get rid of distracted, yeah. So you're fine, Athenar. I need an endurance test at plus 60 from you. You're at minus 30, though, because of the fatigue conditions. So now everybody's going to get sick and just die from sickness and plague. Oh, no. Ew. Can I, I'm going to use my You got one left? Points. Yeah, I would yeah. definitely use it. <laughs> oh, my God. Son of a bitch. 3% <laughs> better. Ew. So sorry. Okay, well, you get a minor infection as well, so please roll us a d10, sir, to see how long it takes before you are infected. Okay, you have eight days until this inf uh, affects you, so right now you do not have any of these negatives. Um, so let me just write this down, because we'll probably forget. So Athenara, incubation, eight days. Lavolpe, yours was one, correct? Yes, sir. One day in for three days, right? Yes. 
Okay. We'll roll for Athenara's when he gets to that point to see how long it lasts. Okay. Um, and finally, I need everybody to give me a cool test versus moderate corruption for fighting these things. You need two success levels. And do we still have the fatigue negative modifiers? Uh, yes, you do. Chris, uh, no. I had failed that at the, the beginning. No, so. we, we use that for your fear test instead, remember? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um. This is two corruption points? Two corruption points. And Eisen <laughs> has not had a good couple of days. He's gained four corruption in a 24 hour period. Um, yes. I'm pretty corrupt. So, do I get a corruption if, point per negative? It's it's two. If you, this is this is a moderate test, so it's two if you fail. You don't, you don't okay. add more if you get worse. Okay. So the Volpe's uh, seven out of seven. Then I'm ten out of seven. Yeah. Oh man. Now we got mutations coming into the mix too. Oh. My Goodness. Okay, Lavolpe, I think it's when you pass your corruption that you test. I think. Um, yeah. If you gain more. So if you gain one more corruption point, you have to test for mutation. So you're on okay. the cusp right now. Unfortunately, as we all may remember, uh, Athenara, because he's an elf, um... He, uh, he suffered a corruption, and he rolled really poorly to drop his corruption points, so he's been sitting at... Or he didn't mutate last time, that's what it was, he kept getting mm -hmm. corruption points, so... To end the session, Athenara, I need for you to make a straight-up endurance test. If you pass, you do not mutate, but if you fail... I get all my negatives, right? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> it's the worst possible time. Your bodies are overwhelmed. Your minds are weak. Dude, oh. Thirty-one versus it's first zero. At zero. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Come on. laughs> oh my God! Welcome to Warhammer. Well, you mutate. So, yep. first things first. Lose corruption points equal to your willpower bonus. Willpower. Which is okay. Four. four. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm back, back under. Back below your you threshold. Go. Barely, but I'm under. One point. <laughs> Yikes. So what, you're at six out of seven now? Yes. Okay. And then I need you... So we, as we remember, elves only ever get mental mutations. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're gonna roll on the Slanesh table. Well, yeah, because you were fighting Slanesh creatures, and Slanesh likes the souls of elves, and well, you've been fighting a lot of Slanesh shit lately, so yep. that's fair. Uh, here we go. A 53 hurried masochism? Oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh. Gain the belligerent creature trait. You cannot flee voluntarily. Oh. Belligerent. Oh. This creature loves to win a fight. As long as it has more advantage than its opponent, it is immune to Ooh. psychology. Bro, okay. that's kind of good. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Why are these yeah. mental mutations yeah. like buffs? Enjoy. <laughs> well, maybe... maybe. Maybe the minor infection will put him down. That's what's going to kill you, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Die from blood rot or some shit. Yes. Okay, well, Athenar becomes a bit more deranged and uh, apparently psychotic and enjoying... I mean, it makes sense now. You're just getting more... Maybe we should have you roll for corn next time. You're getting kind of bloodthirsty here. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Well, we'll deal with the rest of the healing next time for any critical wounds that are still lingering, but wow, <laughs> what a way to end the fucking night. Huh. Ison having a bad day, gaining four corruption points in a single day. 
But, <laughs> like one of them was a, like a choice, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, La Volpe getting dangerously close. <laughs> you've held it. You've held it off for a long time, Telian. But mm -hmm. you realize now why so many witch hunters go fucking crazy. It's a rough job, bro. It's true. Man, can our heroes hold it together till the end? We shall see. Well done tonight, fellas. Tough fight, but uh, you pulled it off. And why those the creatures were something else? They, they, they weren't durable, but like their modifiers were pretty nuts. Yeah, I rolled. I rolled pretty well, all things considered, with the uh, yeah. saves too, mm. man. Definitely more than I should have. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all we got for tonight, folks. So thanks for staying with us. Thank you, Craig, for not disconnecting either. That's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, we're up, up, and away. So, thanks again, listeners. Love having you. Hope you've enjoyed this crazy fucking combat of Warhammer, as we all know and love. And we'll be back for more sadomasochistic elves next week. <laughs> Nighty night. <laughs>